Why stay Earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier, owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. We'll put those marksmanship scores to good use. I hope we haven't lost that silver tongue to frostbite. I can be reasonably sure you know how to add and subtract.
Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Not likely, bootlickers. Ugh. Initiate skip jump. Status. Structural integrity down 25%. Power levels down 25%. <sighs> Shit. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? A bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go.
you've been frozen for a while, there's bound to be unforeseen side effects. You've tried the best now. <laughs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Ah, looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo, not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy.
over here before you get yourself killed. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. Really? How is he? Shouldn't have done that. Spacer's Choice family ain't authorized to receive medical aid from off-brand physicians. We'll see him back to Edgewater. Just as soon as I cross these marauders off with the swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense, I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs, son. Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Here we go. This is gonna take a lot of paperwork. Marauders, deserters, illegal landing. What is this colony coming to? Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Marauder, please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Health. Smile for my surveillance device, Marauder. I am tracking your every move. Intruders are not authorized to access the unreliable's amenities, including the cargo hold's workbench.
Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. I detect an elevated heart rate, indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Jetstream procedures initiated. Disengage in airlocks. Prepare to eject all 40 bodies in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you are still here, my deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, 
You owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we gotta dock your pay. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. This is gonna take a lot of paperwork. Not just anyone has chosen to enforce landing regulations, you know? I had to fill out four holes. Oh, hey, where'd you come from? Running around in a marauder's attire. You're liable to give some people the wrong idea. It's in poor taste. Dressing up like a marauder's disrespectful to all the workers that got eaten by him. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town, avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls, and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family.
Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. W what's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under, free of charge. Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know? Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Yeah? You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say, those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. Every now and again, a virulent plague sweeps through our town. That's life on the frontier, I suppose. A body grows accustomed. Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one... Uh, all my life? Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise. Only problem's the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. Former people, yeah. Marauder's been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Oh no. They are after the most precious loot of all. Spacer's Choice Company property. If those marauders swipe any more bodies out of my cemetery, company's gonna duck my pay. You could look at it, but you... Works. Well, if you're gonna go headhunting, talk to Constable Reyes back in town. She pays for marauders by the finger. Couldn't tell you. No, I mean, I'm contractually prohibited from saying anything that might reflect poorly on Spacer's choice. Ah, avoid it. Shouldn't have said that either. Look, forget I said anything. Merciful law. Is that a marauder's outfit? I don't want you wandering into my shop wearing something you've lifted off a corpse. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No. Thank you, that's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. 
I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Burial, in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. What can I... Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon. And if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. A ship? Dear me. You seem to have lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. This is what happens when you let your imagination run wild. I don't approve of fantasizing. It's a dreadful habit, corrosive to the mental faculties. You ought to let the vicar take a look inside your head. Vicar Maximilian, our man from the OSI, here to spread the message of scientism like a soothing balm upon a feverish head. Or so you'd expect. You'll find him in our local church, probably neglecting his duties. He doesn't seem to like us much. The vicar has not been with us long, and in his relatively short tenure in Edgewater, gives off the distinct whiff of superiority. Go ahead. The plague's come at us with a vengeance this year. Lost six workers in as many months. I wouldn't call them good workers, mind you. If they were any good, they'd have been treated. Still, it is a shame. Fever, chills, fatigue, aching, vomiting, an excess of phlegm, a tendency towards belly aching. Whatever it may be, I have developed my own palliative. Boiled canid liver and a splash of ethanol. Company policy, friend. We don't have enough medicine to treat all of us, so we treat the best among us. Mr. Thompson's brainchild. Have you met him yet? Thoughtful-looking fellow, stares out of his office most hours. Edgewater has been good to me. I consider myself privileged to work here. I am never wanting for work, not since the plague started. As the good vicar says, work fortifies the spirit of a man. If you want to feel exhausted, try not having any work.
What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? You were probably poking around my things. I really shouldn't leave my letters sitting out in the open. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Yes, I suppose I must. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Keep your distance, friend. No place for a traveler. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Because I'm sick, you don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are going to talk. Figured it was obvious. I got sick. Couldn't get better on my own. Got moved here for everyone's sake. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. People trouble. Lazy worker like me getting special treatment from some out-of-town physiker like you. People will talk. Company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. Open fire! Waste of company ammo! Spacer's choice takes care of its own. Had your rations yet? Yep. Two whole cans of Saltuna. Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. At least you got your health. I've got some time. Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. 
how much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. She'll toss me in the sick house. I would have confessed before the good vicar. Get some ablutions for my spirit. Just never found my courage is all. Hey, you're hale and healthy and possibly for hire, ain't ya? I'd do a good turn for an expiring old man. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. So you'll do it then? You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Just keep your head down when you're in there. Mara Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. I know that, but I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never did find my courage. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Excuse me. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's, uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. All right, here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town, and we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape, so I'm reaching out to you. I'm paid better than Abernathy. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. That's all I can ask of you.
the latest report? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. Nothing we can do about that. Never seen you here before. You a visitor? Welcome. On behalf of the Spacer's Choice family, let me welcome you to... to, uh... Where am I again? Oh, I ask myself questions all the time. For example, why do we spend money on these fancy latrines when we have a perfectly good wall outside? Oh, it's fine. I I'm only on my third bottle. I don't start heaving up my guts as long as I can count to three. Company lets me imbibe as much zero-G brew as I can afford. Even gave me a discount on account of my injury. You jealous yet? Yep. Got my mitt stuck in a rotor wheel. Shredded my wrist up real good. Conrad went and sewed up my hand, but I couldn't do much about the pain. Boss was real generous to me, though. Got myself a 5% discount on zero-G brew. After the second bottle, the only pain I feel is emotional. Hey, Conrad's a surgeon. Well, he's a barber. That's like surgery, but for your hair. I don't know you. Uh-huh. The Unreliable, you say? Never heard of any company supply ship with that particular name. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hardworking company folk here. <laughs> Am I that easy to read? Yeah, we've been having some problems lately. Loyalty issues, lines in the sand. I know where folk in Edgewater stand, but you, I don't know you. If you're gonna have a drink, I'd like to ask that you do it within the premises. <sighs> Can't have you taking drinks over to those deserters. <sighs> Traitors, the lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. Town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Do you now? And what makes you think Mr. Thompson wants to talk to you? He's a busy man. You want to talk to Mr. Thompson, try ignoring your duties. He'll summon you up to that great big tower atop the cannery, and you'll get yourself a proper dressing down. It is a good thing. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't deserve to live here. Simple as that. Go ahead. I don't see how that's any of your business. You're the first to ask after me in some time. I'll give you that. But I don't have a story to share. My family's worked Spacer's Choice for two generations, and I've lived in Edgewater just about all my life. Wanted to work in the sciences once upon a time. Would you believe it? That was a wild fancy. Glad I disabused myself. What happened, you ask? What always happens when you're dreaming? I woke up. I just didn't have the brains for it. Asked too many questions. Wasn't suited to the work. So I did the right thing and worked the life I was always meant to live. Now that I'm behind a bar, I can ask all the questions I want. Important ones. Like when are you gonna pay your tab? And would you like another round of cold refreshing zero G? Don't talk to me that way, please. Spent many years disabusing myself of that notion. Don't need you putting it back in my head. Hmm. Lab work ain't for me. Never was. Never will be. Spacer's Choice put me where I belong. And for that, I am grateful. They did. They gave me a life. Gave me a purpose. 
This is where I belong. What's wrong with that? It's good, honest work. Pots and pans don't scrub themselves. Glasses don't fill themselves either. Unless you're in Byzantium. I hear everything's automated there. Not that I'll ever find out. Not so fast. I told you about my life. Your turn to tell me about yours. So, what's your story? What's there to figure out? Stands to reason you work for a company. You ain't Spacer's choice. Could be you're with Auntie Cleo. Don't see what a Cleo worker's doing in Spacer country. Trying to eyeball the competition, are we? Well, good luck trying to figure yourself out. Sounds like you'll need it. Ugh, is this the start of a joke? If you want me to laugh at your jokes, it's a three drink minimum. Look, I don't know what you're blathering about. If you took a blow to your skull, you really should settle down with some zero G. Anyhow, whatever happens outside the walls is not my business. Only deserters and marauders wander out there, and I cannot tell you which I revile more. My world is these four walls, that door, and a row of mugs that need cleaning. Let me make something clear. Spacer's choice has been real good to me. The town's been real good to me. I start gallivanting around outside the walls, poking around in places I shouldn't be, learning things I've got no right to know. People will talk. <laughs> Won't ever catch me asking about the world outside. Else the town's gonna say Amelia's gone soft. That Amelia's pondering desertion. <laughs> I don't want that. There you go with that thinking again. Didn't anyone ever tell you it's dangerous? I've said enough. People come here to drink their problems away. If they wanted to face their problems, they'd go see our vicar. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm contractually obligated. We'll get you mostly... Coming right up. Make me report you to Mr. Tom.
You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees. Which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives.
Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. The war! The coming apocalypse! Man versus machine! I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about, firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans mostly, some spacer's chaw, a few bit carts. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the Resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Mechanicals got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um... The blue glowy square thing. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent. A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, yeah, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. Go on. You ever seen the way a mechanical just stands there? Just looking at you, scanning you with its murderous oculus. Mechanicals have been programmed to eliminate the human race. They've been programmed to replace us. First, they will rob us of our jobs. And once they have taken away our livelihoods, they will take away our very lives. Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. Navigation systems have determined this location as Spacer's Choice. Designated mechanical repair bay. Attempting to misdirect or confuse a Spacer's Choice mechanical 
is a punishable offense. Please report yourself to your supervisor. Damage to navigation systems detected. Attempting to return to designated repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Bring us honor, soldier. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. I'd rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer, a weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical hearts. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. On the double soldier. Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop. Just be a minute.
Bring us honor, soldier. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand volts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. Don't tell anyone, all right? I've got a contact, a real expert in the inner workings of the automaton. We are gonna rip those mechanical secrets right out of their circuits. Well, excuse me. What I meant was I'm going to get a contact. I didn't know I had to be all prissy about my grammar around you. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. You're gonna have to find an intact model somehow. If you die horribly, I will pour out a can of Zero-G to your memory. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Huh. Suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I shook hands with the guy. What? No. If I knew he was sick, I would have had him reported. I needed his fees because of his name. A for Abernathy. He was at the top of my list, you see? Yeah? The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again? <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason you asking? Hope's just a rumor, friend. Ancient rumor at that. Maybe you've been out in the sun too long. Why don't you head over to the cantina? Get yourself some zero-G brew. It's a brew that's good for what ails you. Look, I don't know what's got you caterwauling about hope this and colony that, but you need to stop, or there's gonna be trouble. Trouble's in the asking. Or don't much care for folk running their mouths, spreading hoaxes and the like. Frankly, neither do I. Something... Yeah? What about him? Well, yeah. It's 
what I'm contractually obligated to do. What's this about? Yeah. Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't where it's supposed to be. The night we were supposed to commend his body to the earth, I had his grave all dug up and ready, right? And so I thought, I'll just rest my eyes a bit. When I woke up, his body was gone. Spirited away, vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Or he rose from the dead. Let me know if you find anything. Yeah?
I've been feeling pretty low these days. Somebody's been running around town raving about a colony ship. Plague must have gone into their brain matter. Thanks. I'll see to it that this medicine gets to the people who need it. Here. Something for your trouble. Nothing personal, but I hope we never do business together again. Don't want to make a habit of consorting with smuggler types. You do have some cheek on you. Lucky for you, I kept a little contingency fee in case you tried to negotiate with me. Somebody deserving. Silas on account of him being out in the cold. Amelia seeing how she's around people all the time. Anybody in the sick room? I've been feeling pretty low these days. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in Frontier Justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. His likeness decorates many a wanted poster. Do you have any relevant information about this individual? Mm-hmm. Shot you into space. You know, lying to a Spacer's Choice Constable is a violation of company policy and punishable by a fine. It is for a Spacer's Choice. Unfortunately, the arrest of Mr. Wells falls outside my authority. I enforce the company policy of Spacer's Choice in the region of Emerald Vale. Wells is wanted by the board. If you have information related to the location of Phineas V. Wells, you are required to submit that information to your nearest board authority. Any information regarding outstanding bounties and wanted criminals should be directed to Mr. Udom Bedford. Mr. Bedford's office is located on the Groundbreaker. Halcyon's original colony ship, now repurposed into a space station. Mr. Udom Bedford represents the board's interest on the Groundbreaker. Something else I can do for you? As long as you're... If this is a setup to a joke, you should know I've never found anything amusing in my life. I don't serve Edgewater. Edgewater and the entire region of Emerald Vale serves Spacer's Choice. Spacer's Choice is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Defense Logistics, which occupies a seat on the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, also known as the board. I must admit it bothers me that you don't already know this. Flattery won't get you anywhere with me. The bureaucracy is a noble profession, but not all of us are gifted enough to serve in it. Something... Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. Nothing I can do. But, uh... We'll get you mostly drunk. Coming right up.
Wow, you crossed them all off, like some sort of heroic accountant running down a list. Teach me your ways. Oh, well that's a shame. I mean, I could pay you in Adrena time, but I've already bartered most of my stash over to these poor saps. You, on the other hand, you were a sight to behold. If I had half your skills, I'd be the greatest outlaw the coast has ever seen. I'm great at clarifying. Uh, no. I insinuated myself into their company, see? And they didn't seem to mind one whit. I may have bartered them a few boxes of Adrena time, but yeah, I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it. I don't know. The vital processes that constitute the miracle of life are mysterious and unknowable. Oh, you mean around these guys? The marauders wouldn't hurt me, they love me. I'm practically their queen. Yeah, must be my natural charisma. I got kicked out of Edgewater on account of falling sick with plague and stealing some medicine to treat myself. I'd heard some outlaws set up camp in the botanical labs. I decided to throw in with them seeing as I always wanted to be an outlaw myself. Instead, what do I find? But a bunch of former workers camped out around a greenhouse. I couldn't just go back to the cannery, so I was stuck with them. I've got all the time in Halcyon. Wish we had some better rations. Something to report? We pay by the finger. What do you have for me? Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. I'll just need your signature here, 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 and here. Got any more fingers for me? Mabel Burgess. Age 37. Right or left-handed? Let's just say, no longer applicable. I remember Doc Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Still one outstanding bounty. If you've got a finger, I've got the paperwork. Here we are. Birdie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint ink. Here's all the compensation you've earned, plus a bonus. You've done such a bang up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congratulations. Let me stop you there. It is official Spacer's Choice policy that all Marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Ever since the company first settled the veil. Life's good out here, but it ain't easy. Some folk can't keep pace with the demands of frontier life. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turn deserter, some turn Marauder. None of them get my sympathy. Uh-huh. I recall young Eugene. Good kid. Nice smile. Bussy about his health, though. Took a little too much adrenaline. That'll do a number on your brain matter. Says so right on the warning label. 
Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of adrenatime. What's on your mind? If your equipment is in...
problem. Any food, it cooks. Yeah, but Bess, I mean, the cannery cooks in sealed cans. Exact time, exact temperature. The food swells during cooking, bursting the cans. So change the time or the temperature. There's no controls for that. I'd have to dig into her guts, rig all manner of bypasses. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. That reason was me. I asked too much and pushed too hard. But I am ready to make amends if they are willing to return to the fold. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Great. I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know.
If you could see your way to getting us our power back... Go ahead. It is my job to keep two eyes on my town. I am the steward of this place, and this is my watch post. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Yes, as a matter of fact. When I stand at my window and look out over my town, here's what I see. I see decent, loyal, hard-working people. I see a family. We are all part of the Spacer's Choice family. We are all doing what we were brought into this world to do. This is a Spacer's Choice town. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. The company keeps us warm, keeps us fed, keeps us working. Loyalty's got nothing to do with it, friend. This is good old-fashioned gratitude. I'm trying to remember 25 years, 26. When you get to my age, the years just rush by. You stop counting altogether. I remember looking out this window and seeing the veils spread out from horizon to horizon. We were a sprawling town. We were booming. Times change, people change, but the veil will always be here. Spacer's choice will always be here. Our work won't ever end. I take comfort in that. Go ahead. Adelaide was our only flavor specialist. We are a Saltuna canning institution. Saltuna without flavor is like a cysty pig without tumors, borderline inedible. Word up to me, friend. I'd stack our larders with Saltuna galore. No other brand of Saltuna adds as much vim or vigor to the body's humors. But, and this is something we must keep between the two of us, Saltuna is hard to come by. What with being a species indigenous to the seas of another world. Oh, we've scavenged together some organic material from the surrounding environs. Mostly organic, mostly local mushrooms some of which possess a texture akin to a well-boiled slab of saltuna. The difference is all but impossible to detect to any but the prissiest of palate. Go ahead. That you are not one of us may work to your advantage. Adelaide and her folk loathed the people of Edgewater, you see. I admit the fault was mine. I'm about as diplomatic as a bristling canid. I just hope Adelaide and her folk will see their way past my flaws and return to town. Scripture tells us we all have our purpose in the world. Our work shows us that purpose. We should not have to move on from it. Yes, we have lost good workers to desertion. We have lost even more to plague, but it is why we must square our shoulders and carry on. Losing Adelaide was the hardest. She was our only flavor specialist. When she walked away, I knew we were in trouble. Spacer's Choice Saltuna is renowned across the system for its quality flavors and additives. We used to sell citrus-flavored Saltuna in our heyday. Ever since Adelaide left, we have been reduced to selling unflavored and spearmint. Go Can we not? Talking about Unpleasant things always get my bile up. If I had enough medicine to treat everyone who fell sick, I would, but I don't. I can't save everyone. So I have to choose. Yes, it is. And it's necessary. Spacer's choice is a family. And the survival of the family is more important than the survival of the individual. That I cannot say. There was no moment when the plagues began. Disease always lurks on the fringes of society, waiting to infect the idle and the lethargic. But in the last 10 years, the plagues have become progressively worse and increasingly frequent. Corporate doesn't like us using the word should. It encourages the imagination. I believe plague is a test. It is a test of our loyalty 
and our fortitude, and it is one we will see through to the end. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Mr. Can we talk? Sorry. Can we chat? Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. He ain't a liar. He believes every word he says. It's just, he doesn't always get where other folk are talking from. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody, well. I mostly listened to them talk, kept my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Life's hard here, especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. The mission's on the east side of town. You can't miss it, on account of it being the only clean thing. About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto, at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling? This season's tossball predictions? The quickest way out of town? I've never seen you before. And there's been no paperwork indicating a transfer. Half the time it's wrong, but a new worker without paperwork? Unheard of. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy. Like a trapped animal. Pretty universal here. Except for Ms. Holcomb, who, for some reason, doesn't seem to have much to say to me. Isn't that right? It's just... There's more to it all than numbers. 
sorry. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. Yes, but there are few who hear me in this miserable place. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. Yes, and thank you for pointing it out. It is wrong of me to succumb to distress. This place could be so much more, and I will continue in my quest to make it so. They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. Selling? No. It is free for all who seek it. I'm sorry you don't find these tried and true words of wisdom to your liking. Have you? These people need something, anything they can grasp to survive. Delving into the metaphysical minutia of the Grand Plan would be nonsense to them, if not worse. I'm... <sighs> My apologies. The townsfolk are having a tough time of it. And it's been difficult for me to enrich their lives. They are good people. It is just... difficult to reach them. But what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Ms. Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the Fold. Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? What? No! I don't want to burn it! I would never... I mean, I just want to... Uh, look, I have a very simple goal here. I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Thank you. If you retrieve it, 
You can always find me here.
Something you need? That's on account of how I never met her. I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high-level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. You mean about the mission being too clean? I know, but Vicker says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicker sees is one ain't never been run. It's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French. Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Well, uh, yes. But I assure you, it was not for personal gain, only for the greater good. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Yes. You're right. Such are the workings of the equation. And I've only my own hubris to blame. I certainly never planned for this contingency. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back, not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Fantastic. Let me get my things in order, and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery, and to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain, whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale.
Move along, stranger. We don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. Yeah, that's us. And you can tell Thompson we're doing just fine by ourselves. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. A Geo what? Look. Plants ain't my purview. You're better off asking after Adelaide. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. You don't know what enough with the questions means? No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around, wondering if Marauders got to her. Thank the Eternal. Wait, Marauder Camp? Is she all right? Queen of the Marauders, huh? That's what comes of watching serials. Rots your gray. If you could bring her home, I'd be obliged. And if you could cross off some marauders on the way, I'd be much obliged. I'll tell you what I can. Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. She was lazy and thoughtless, but she's still one of our own. What is it? Over in the hothouse, tending crop. If you're hungry, You hungry? We got canid ribs, canid flank, canid snout too. Something I can help you with? Fresh off the limb, and that includes canid meat.
Something I can help you with? You mean Zoe? Yeah, we were pretty close. Not like her to go loping off. Zoe and I were gonna watch the serials, as is our custom. She never turned up. I looked around, but she was nowhere to be found. You sound like some type of corporate fixer asking all these questions. Zoe was always obsessed with this serial. Masked Marketeer. A scion of Byzantium turns to banditry and teaches his marauder companions the wisdom of free market economics. Shame she up and vanished when she did. I had a surprise lined up for her. The other day I got my hands on a genuine copy of the latest Masked Marketeer. I was gonna surprise Zoe with it, but she was gone the next day. Not much of a chance, no. Mind if I ask why you're interested? Zoe's living with marauders? Yeah, that sounds like the sort of sideways, brat-brained plan Zoe'd come up with. Yeah, it could be you're telling the truth. Or maybe you're trying to wheedle me into relinquishing my only copy of The Masked Marketeer. It's a collector's edition after all. Yeah, you're probably right. A true fan would have displayed a gleam in their eye upon hearing the words collector's edition. Here you go, latest copy of The Masked Marketeer. Tell Zoe we're all waiting on her. I'll help if I can. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes. Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery living off whatever scrap Spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I'm all right. 
I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. It's not much of a living. Every single person in that town has sold themselves to Spacer's Choice. The company owns them. Body, blood, and bones. You've been there. You've seen it. All anyone ever does is toil over a cannery. They give their lives for some heartless corporation, and then they're tossed into a Spacer's Choice brand cemetery. So? What do you say? Divert power over to us. Shut down that abominable cannery for good. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Anything? That's not strange at all, dear. Few of us truly know where we are. The world can seem like a forest without end, and it is all too easy to lose one's way. But we must remember that being lost is the first step in discovering yourself. This is the old botanical lab, in Emerald Vale, on Terra 2. By the look on your face, I'm guessing you're not quite following me. Are you not feeling well? Ought to lay your head down if you're running fever. Are you talking about an escape pod of some sort? Where did you say you were from? Is that a new settlement of some kind? I haven't kept news from outside the veil. Oh, you're talking about that old piece of folklore. Now I'm convinced you're delirious. You really ought to lay your head down, dear. Babbling only agitates the humors. You ought to try some of my purgative tea. Won't cure what ails you, but it will distract you for a spell. Maybe I do. I don't know yet. Growing up, I heard my folks talking about the hope. Always believed it was just a story we told ourselves to keep our spirits up. Listen, don't you worry about what I think. That's not important. Worry about what the board thinks of you going around talking about lost ships from decades past. You carry on about coming here from another world, and people will talk. Talk leads to questions. Ask enough questions, and the board comes answering. No, but the board may have reason to fear you. I'm listening. I am getting old, you know. These two lamps of mine are not as bright as they once were. Or I might have seen you for what you are. Remains to be seen. Might be the man that saves the veil. Might be Reed's personal gun hand. People around here lack the strength to effect change. Or they have the strength, but not the will. You seem to have both. I can't stop you from conducting your business down at the plant. I just want you to know that if you take our power away, you will have brought an end to our way of life. If you think Reed does anything in good faith, then you are asking to be lied to. That's because Reed was my boss. I was the cannery's one and only flavor specialist, you see. Remember that limited run of white chocolate saltuna? That was all me. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. 
So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. I could not possibly care less if he does, but you're surely welcome to ask him. Keep your wits about me, friend. What is it? wouldn't do for a Wentzworth. Why? Adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something? Thanks, but I'm not going anywhere. This is where I belong. So you tracked me down just to gab about the mass marketeer? I am impressed. You actually have it? The episode where Lord Cavendish reveals he's been the mass marketeer all along? All right, you convinced me. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. What is it? We didn't 
didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. Zoe. The same Zoe who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. Keep your wits about you, friend. Oh, uh, didn't see you there. I was, uh, well, I was just occupying myself with a little engineering. Whoa, Miss Parvati. Hey, you're, uh, what, um, how, how are you? Hi, 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 uh, hello. Are you, uh, uh, are things safe out here? How are you keeping? Great, just great. I've been trying to keep stuff running, just like you. Only I'm not so... Wait, they didn't kick you out, did they? Oh, gosh, no. I I'm just along with this fella here. Are you from town? Uh, I mean, you don't exactly look like you're from town. Well, what I meant was you're reasonably well-armed and don't look stricken with plague. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well, lying to everybody here. Camp thinks I'm a mechanical genius, but I couldn't fix a busted chair. I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data pads, I could teach myself the ins and outs. Those are good. My dad kept a copy with him when he was working in the cannery. I know the old community center kept a copy. Should find another one back in town. If you could find me even one of those pads, I'd be greatly obliged. No kidding! Really? Well, which one? Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody'd search out those data pads for me. Sure, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. What's on your mind? Couple months. This camp's my home. People you see milling about, they're my family. At least I think of them that way. I owe them my life. Would have died in the wilderness if they hadn't chanced upon me, starving and delirious. We all left the cannery for one reason or another. Me? I was let go. Mostly on account of my incompetence. I mean, I was incompetent. I couldn't even survive on my own. Grace found me, Adelaide took me in, I've been on my feet ever since. You weren't incompetent. You just didn't fit the cannery. Not like here. This place had a U-shaped hole, and now it doesn't. You could stay, you know. Here. I'd be happy to... I mean, uh, we could really use... Uh, oh, this isn't coming out right. Uh, if you want, Adelaide would make a place for you.
any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding. Ain't that just ironical? If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Control room. To the right. I hope we're doing the right thing.
not real. You're not real. No, 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 just leave me alone. You're not real! You're not real! Get away from me, Phantom! Shoot! Scram! You can talk? The Phantom's never talked before. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that Sprat raw. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your Sprats before ingesting. Clearly I mistook you for one of the Phantoms of my imagination, which terrorized me on occasion. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Ooh, hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aether Wave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon? I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. You mean why did the Mechanicals go on a murderous rampage? Same reason any of us do, I suppose. The voice has told them to do it. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Jimmy'd opened the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Braised. Boiled. Charred. Skewered. Sprats are good eating, friend. Chock full of brain food. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us with prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, now that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. Funny thing. I was working on a logic module just before the mayhem started. Security chief found me and confiscated the logic module. The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Jimmy'd open the vending machines.
when I... Bring us honor, soldier. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it, then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding! The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible! You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set! All three parts! I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen! Um, aside from you... Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Uh, just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. I'm listening.
If we send the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil? Get ready. Ah! Woo! Nice work. Blast. Once we do this, there's no going back. Something you need? He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we... All expected the worst. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order.
That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. As long as Reed is still in Edgewater, I will not return. Those are my terms. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell them how I've made the Vale bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the Earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. A human body is rich with nutrients. Edgewater Cemetery's got corpses aplenty, enough for a generation's worth of crops.
If you're falling sick, I don't want you near me. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. Her son got sick with plague a couple years back. The company never gave us enough medication to treat the whole town. So I had to choose, you see. Adelaide's child or someone else's. She's never forgiven me. I don't expect she ever will. I have been holding this town together with both hands. You can't just expect me to leave. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. You are disparaging our parent company, and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. Look at that. The snakes come back. 
I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you across the cargo bay, up the ladders.
What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Based on my initial calculations of Dr. Wells's personality, that seems highly unlikely. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying! The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see, but promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. 
When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. <laughs> A change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Sunbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Welcome back, Captain. How can I... Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Why are obtuse angles so depressed? Because they are never right. As you wish, Captain. 
I have lots of minutes, many minutes, unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber, perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on the Lost Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Traveling the system with you, Captain. Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel that. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. How can I be? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? We are cleared to dock with the Groundbreaker if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. You are more than welcome, Captain. May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard the Groundbreakers got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Captain, up in space. I never thought I'd be able to say that. That's not the point. This hat would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get two with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the Groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. Just arrived? Head over to Customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, 
I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. Yeah, because I knocked my foreman out with a tossball stick. But, to be fair, I wasn't the one who started it. The guy was insulting my Rizzo's Rangers. Look, if it's a crime to defend your favorite tossball team against slander and calumny, well then lock me right up. Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the Chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounged together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Do you mind? I'm trying to file a report. Move along. Learn to keep your eyes to yourself in my job. Nobody wants you looking close at their cargo. Just arrived? Head over to Customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Customs and inspection, right this way! Identification, please. Everybody's got an ID. Oh, let me guess. You, uh, left it in your other pants? <laughs> I hear that one a lot. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably.
not stuck, per se. You could always throw yourself out the airlock. Of course, then you'd find yourself with an exciting new problem. Just the opposite. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations here. Surely this must be some sort of mix-up. They must have a real big bee in their bonnets, then. Everyone knows you don't trifle with Groundbreaker if you want to get your goods on time. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay? Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Ah, a handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera, she'll set you right. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board. That is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are gonna take you off station, though. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full-time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited, or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. Are you pulling my leg? You must be one of them long-haul freighters from outside the colony. Well, I won't hold it against you goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the Board. Yep, Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Sitting around, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Glad to help. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. But there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. All right. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. They can't abide an independent township, especially not one they gotta depend on. We're the first and last stop out of this colony. 
all their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. You sure you didn't just step off one of the interstellar freighters? There's no working with the board. They don't share, not bits, people, or resources. You work for them, or you don't work at all. Groundbreaker cooperating now would be tantamount to joining their ranks, and we sure as shit ain't about to do that. Sounds like, yeah. But from where I sit, it's all coming through loud and clear. They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Sure thing. Be seeing you. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time nor loitering. Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed. Just 26 hours old. Uh, the posting, that is. Not the criminal. <sighs> Allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. Swerving in the air was more like it. Then he crashed hard into the dock and tumbled out of his ship and fled on foot. Spilled Rizzo's Violet Spectrum vodka all over Officer Hartley. An affront of its own, considering none of us are approved for anything higher than Green Spectrum. Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. Oh, I will. As soon as the Chief approves the personnel reorg required for a bounty dispatch. So, in about three to seven weeks. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head. Or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. Do I look like your gossipy best friend? While I'm on post, I take my duties real serious. I would have no qualms whatsoever escorting you to a cell. Understand? I'm not here for a chat. Now get moving before I see you moved. We're the security force here on Groundbreaker. Started back before the crossing, you know. The original force was made up of a Marine detachment from the 77th Marine Expeditionary Unit, Trailward Fleet. Folks started calling us Mardets because it was easier to say. Guess it stuck. Still waiting to hear back. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Chief Tennyson don't generally hire outsiders for station jobs, but you could try asking at Sublight Salvage. They got an office on the far end of the promenade deck. Anything else I can help you with, mister? They're run by Miss Hagen. Half the tramp captains and contractors in the system have worked for her. I ought to warn you straight off. Scuttlebutt says some of the jobs they do aren't exactly above board. Downright anti-business, if you catch my meaning. Let's say there's been times when I heard somebody needed a thing, and somebody else had such a thing, but they weren't inclined to sell. 
Now let's say the one who had the thing suddenly found theirs missing, and the one who needed got one. If anyone asks, Sublight says it got salvaged from an old wreck. Case closed. If anybody could prove them criminals, the board would have put their foot down a long time past. They always got, uh, what do they call it? Deniability? Something gets nicked or someone turns up dead. Sublight says, hey, independent contractor, not our responsibility. But everyone knows what they're doing, top to bottom. Against is a strong word. Let's say that if you need something the board ain't inclined to sell, you might look to Sublight to get it. You might pay Sublight a shitload of bits for it, but that money gets passed on to their contractors, so in the end, it's still business. You must admit, there is a beauty to the order of it. Everything operates within the constraints of the grand plan, even organized crime. People do what they gotta to get by. Oh, sure, sure, sorry. Gets a mite boring at this desk, you know. Then I get to chatting too much, and Commandant Sunia's gotta reprimand me again, and... Oops, doing it again. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. Captain's real understanding. Can't speak for the captain, but I'm used to listening to folks drone on about their pointless, depressing lives. Awful generous of you, listening to me like this. Chief Junlei Tennyson. She runs the ship. Does a real great job of it, too. Her family's worked on it for, gosh, since it was built, I think. Back before the crossing. What's she like? Is she a good boss? Good as she can be, I guess. What with all the troubles Groundbreaker's facing. She could stand to lighten up, I suppose. But she tries her best to do right by folks, and that's what matters. N no reason. Don't you trouble yourself over it, Captain. That was very convincing, miss. I think your captain almost bought it. Sure is, but she makes it look easy. She's real competent, our chief, even if she ain't real friendly. This is the security desk, sir. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. I'm not so good at filing. Mix up first name and surname one, two, seven times. Well, folks are liable to start taking your filing privileges away. We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, it's not, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat? That might warrant a thank you tour or something. All right, I, I guess. In and out, though. Just try not to do any shady stuff. I'd like to keep my job. Can we talk? I picked up this weird signal the other day from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Ma Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the Groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. A thousand pardons, my good captain. I thought we were engaging in witty repartee. Now, as far as tracking down this scholar, fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra II. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. 
Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain. How goes the hunt? Nothing excessive, mind you. Have at it, then. find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. The board would like to remind spacers and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted for your protection. Canyons of acid and sulfur rain are the least of the horrors plaguing the surface of Monarch. Anarchists live in front of the animals, lawless, savage, and unemployed. Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest and go. We used to be the go and rest, but folks never knew when to leave. Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. Oh, you can't miss her. Right behind you, number two. First unit on the left, or second unit from the right, depending on which direction you count from. Of course. Most of our supplies come and go through merchants. Company ships and salvage runs are the only traffic we tend to get. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. If there's a cost to being a company man, he paid it in spades. 
Fine, as long as the board keeps its grubby mitts to itself. Chief Tennyson holds the ship together, the promenade holds our economy together, and Sublight is the shoddy jewel in our rusty old crown. Our local garbage collectors. That Lilia Hagen never met a debris field she didn't like. She freely admits she planted her roots in Groundbreaker to escape board oversight, but I think there's more to it. She's unusual in the head, that one. Our chief Tennyson has an independent streak, same as her mother and grandmother who rode this ship on the crossing. There's a reason the board's embassy is a glorified shoebox. While Junlei Tennyson lives and breathes, Groundbreaker remains free. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient, or an oven. Just like store-bought. I've got a lovely little throw pillow. Great law, is it hot in here? Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Laws, maybe I should charge you double. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. 
You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Might want to acquaint yourself with Junlei Tennyson, Groundbreaker's chief. She's been trying to get a handle on this heat problem we've got. You'll find her fretting in engineering. I'd say she's a sweet girl, but law for fen someone call me a liar. Yes. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Anytime, sweetheart. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisements. Now see here, I'm Indian wildlife and the unemployed. Talk to your local manager about applying for military training and lend your life to protecting our wonderful brands and products. Not guarantee full employment rights tax. You ever hard up for work? Try something. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Oh, my mistake. You know that sound when you've snapped on an injector clip? Ah, that's how you know your weapon loves you back. I got a full line of weapon modifications I'd be happy to show you. Stay up top. You know, 
keep watch. Okay? CNP Bars Pocket. If you're hungry, you've come to the right place. They're terrified. Who the? Hey, McRed, were you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back away now, or you'll parley with the king. Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. Huh. Yum, yum. Time to feed the flames. It's nothing personal. Promise. Is this what carbon monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. Uh, speaking for myself, Captain, I am not of a mind to be murdered by a psychopath who plays with fire. You came with the crew. Welcome. We got plenty of space to spread out, but only room for one captain. I know this ain't a toy, neighbor from above. It's a catalyst, just like me. Keep talking. I like the sound of your voice. Listen to the fire of those convictions. This one's hungry for justice. Alive or dead? Rare or medium? What's it gonna be? How do you want me cooked, bounty hunter? My flame? Shit. Little flick here got me started on the pyro path. Fine. He's yours. Give him a good home. Don't worry, Mr. McRed. We'll treat Mr. Flick extra nice on account of he's your friend. You call your lighter Little Flick? I'll miss my baby Pyro, but it beats losing my head. This court needs its king, and I'm one of a kind. Keen eyes you got there. Sunita gave me this lighter. We had a carnal understanding a few years back, and she wanted me to have something to remember her by. Lay it on me, boss. They rejected it again, didn't they? I thought I could take my fungus garden and go corporate, you know? Damn! Well, maybe I'm better off. Uh, Rizzo's wouldn't know innovation if it bit him on their backsides. You're a natural inventor, Mr. McGred. Don't let him get you down. Kind of you to say, engine gal. You're a lighter in dark times. Ship got impounded. The crew and I racked up a debt while we were grounded, and my baby got sold to Sublight. Scrapped for parts. That's bureaucracy for you. Piracy with a smile. Am I your dark reflection? Shit. 
must be getting old. Stay here too long, and the groundbreaker drains you like a fuel tank. The second floor is my place. Off limits to the likes of you. Whatever business brings you down to my domain, keep it local. Even the proverbial unwashed masses would turn their noses up at this place. Or cut them off. Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastards. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Something the about being in space gives me the creeps. unbearable.
How goes the hunt? I've been ruminating on it, and I decided, if you ain't killed McRed yet, I want you to hurt him a little before you do. Nothing excessive, mind you, but the scoundrel deserves a light beating at least before he kicks off. He tell you that, did he? I might have kicked his ass from one end of the groundbreaker to the other a few years back. Whatever he reads into that is his business. I believe I'm growing fond of you, bounty hunter. If you got the Mardettes' backs, the Mardettes have got yours. Here's the bounty payout. Nice work down there. With any luck, we can hire more sharp-eyed bounty hunters like you in the future. With that bastard McRed dead, there ain't much else in the offing. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Are you listening to me, Emperu? You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not making a scene. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Emperu? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. What seems to be the problem? If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Not without dispensation from Chief Jun Lei, I fear. Supplies are hard to come by out here. We don't have the ability to manufacture our own medical supplies here on Groundbreaker. Regrettably, we are dependent on the board for such mundane items as bandages and antibiotics, as well as more critical resources like adequately trained staff. We'd nearly signed a supply agreement with Anticleos, but they demanded we only use their branded drugs, and that's simply not tenable. Take care. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Sure is. You need a deft hand to straighten a busted nose or sparkle up those not-so-pearly whites? I'm your gal. Of course, there's not much cosmetic improvement going on at the moment, not without my mechanicals. Where the law is, Irian, anyway? Did he now? The mouth on that man. I swear his late mother'd be ashamed. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever gonna get my service mechanicals at this rate. Our delivery man. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. 
Sometimes by dates, usually by bandits. Surgery mostly. Medical personnel are difficult to come by on Groundbreaker. The board won't let their doctors and nurses station here, and they own all the medical schools. If we can't hire their people, we can't hire anyone. Everyone on staff here on Groundbreaker was trained by me or Idris. We're good, don't get me wrong. But we've only two heads between us, and we don't know everything. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Keep hanging around. What can I do? You have your... Sure, this is perfectly safe. I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease myself. To the last ratchet on rotten time! Leave me in peace! You whole-headed quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. Should have known she'd send a bruiser after me. Damned if I don't rue the day I saved her scrawny little hide. Inadvertently, I befriended a bloodhound in the process. All right, okay, we can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. You'd let a poor, ill woman get disappeared by the board? Awfully cold-blooded of you. Though I admire your backbone. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back, I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. If I had, you think I'd be hiding out in the Med Bay? I was gonna steal it, lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? On Jesse? Good luck. 
The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bit cart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding him. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. Have you seen this man? Reward offered for information leading to the capture of noted terrorist Phineas Wells. Report any such. Have you seen this? Have you seen this man? Reward offered for information leading to the capture of noted terrorist Phineas Wells. Report any sightings to your local board embassy. This is Halcyon Reloads XF411. Good Thought there'd be more machinery. Must be housed on a sublevel. I could spend all day in here and not have looked at half the best stuff. It's all pretty worn, though. Junlei Tennyson. I'm captain around here, but chief to my friends. Hope you don't mind the formal introduction. Groundbreaker doesn't see many visitors. I heard we had someone in impound. Wish I could help. I gave the bureaucrats a mode of authority over freight traffic, and it rankles them good when I challenge it. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. At ease. Nice to see an outsider with some working brain cells. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer is just passing through. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Force of habit, I guess. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. 
I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Right. In person. Sh sure thing, Captain. Wow, great. I I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your, your name's pretty too. I should have said... Sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now, if there's nothing else, there are other parts of the ship begging for my attention. Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. None. Every time I give in to the board, Groundbreaker loses its freedom. Soon there won't be anything left. I can't allow that. The board isn't helping and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone aboard, will be cooked alive. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. Then you know it's a den of criminals and miscreants. Unfortunately, I'll need to ask you to return. I have. One of my engineers, plus a small security detail. They didn't come back. I can't afford to lose any Mardits on this job. No offense, but a freelancer like you is more dispensable. Mardits are descended from the original Marine Detachment that crossed the Void with Groundbreaker. I don't put their lives on the line if I can avoid it. You must not have been here long. In Halcyon, new parts come by way of interstellar freighters from Earth, and the board monopolizes that kind of trade. That means I'd have to negotiate with the board. I've already given them the shops, the docking fees, and a damn embassy. Damn right. And while I'm captain of the Groundbreaker, it falls to me to preserve this ship's independence. Good. Once you've obtained the parts, we can proceed to the next phase of repairs.
This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly Good scheduled advertisement. Advertisements for the following story. Tossball finals are scheduled to air soon. You should clear out. Engineering's a dangerous place. Both teams have tested an egg. for performance enhancing stems. A toss ball first. The coaches and referees are debating how and if this behavior is going to Huh, haven't seen any new faces down here since I arrived. Not sure how long ago that was. McGred tends to incinerate anyone who comes by. Ah, that's too bad. I mean, he was a scary fucker, total pyromaniac, but... You know how it is, you meet a guy, get used to his quirks, and then blam! I'll get back to my post. See you topside, stranger. Be seeing you, stranger. You've returned, and in one piece. Color me impressed. You're right, I don't. 
The board is after two things, bits and power, and they only get it by sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. I placate them when I have something to offer, but I can also be a real hard ass. It'd be a joy if I could kick out the corporate merchants and reclaim the docking fees in my lifetime. Too much of Groundbreaker's income is flowing in the wrong direction. I'd like to see that change. You've got my attention. Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight mantipillar infestation. More than a few. Less than a hive. Nothing you can't handle. We were salvaging parts from a ship. Turned out there were eggs inside. They got into the radiators, and here we are. If every repair was a one-woman job, I wouldn't need an engineering team. As it is, my staff is busy keeping the station from melting down. You can flip a switch for me, but you can't install these parts. Not quickly, at least. Not on the first try. Able, though, you've proven to be. Don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you.
My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. Frustrating. Everything down to the circuit boards is past warranty, so I have the pleasure of making life-or-death decisions on a shoestring budget. Plus, there's no time to train my successor or document fixes in a way that anyone outside the family would understand. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'm really just a, a dab hand with a wrench. Nothing special. Not like a chief engineer. Don't sell yourself short. It doesn't take a seasoned pro to tinker on Groundbreaker. Just someone who knows how a ship ought to feel. We're always thirsting for help. If you could find your way around this labyrinth of ducts and panels, we could work something out. You see any bite-sized Tennyson children running around? I didn't think so. The next captain won't have my heritage. I'll have to foster that talent from somewhere. It's only a question of when. Sure is. The Tennysons came over on the Groundbreaker. My grandmother, Chief Gaying, kept it together during the crossing and until she died. I was promoted only recently, when my mom died. Then I took the leap from Chief Engineer to Captain. They must have been amazing people to have taught you all you know, I mean, which is a lot. That means a lot coming from a fellow engineer. Appreciate it. There wasn't much that took me by surprise about the job, but the little things you never expect or think about, they add up over time. Maybe you can see why I'm protective of Groundbreaker. This ship is family. It's got tinkerings and bypasses that only Tennyson's know about. I hope that was a joke, Captain. I really do. I gelded that thing years ago. Now it brews a stim that goes down stronger than Nan or Spank. Family recipe. You've got...
This is how... You aiming to send a message? If so, we best do it now while we still got time. Me? No. But our relaying capabilities? That's on the final countdown. We're going offline in three, two, one and a half. No. Wait, I've lost track of my weeks. Maybe it was 36 or, uh, sometime dire soon. Our primary relay station soon to be occluded by a gas giant. Happens every 40 years or thereabouts. The events forecasted to last for months, during which we'll lose signal to the station. And that's our problem, how? We've got backup auxiliary relays, but the one currently in orbital range went offline some months ago. We can't spare people for routine maintenance. Yeah, I'm working on it. I finally got the chief to approve the budget for a diagnostic expedition. But allocating the personnel loss for sending a technical team to the relay station keeps getting denied by Junlei. Um, the chief. You save my comm center from chaos. I guarantee I'll get the chief to authorize some payment forms with your name on them while you're out fixing the station. I should say no, but why not? Maybe you can figure out why it's offline. I'll send you with an equipment manual. Hopefully we'll get lucky, or I'll get my approval in time. Hope you don't mind if I borrow that manual when you're done with it, Captain. I could do with some leisure reading. Oh, and I'll need you to retrieve a copy of the Relay's backup data. I gotta forward any messages from Earth stored in the memory. Better late than never, eh? It's not like they're in high demand. Most tend to be adverts on new products, meaning only folks in Byzantium can afford them. I'm sure the station's got a stack of junk messages just waiting for me to sort through. Limping a bit. You alright, Mr. Vicker? Need us to slow down? What are you implying? I am perfectly fit. My uh, knee is just acting up. There's no shame in being older, Mr. Vicker. Don't worry. The captain and I'll take care of you. I need neither your advice nor your pity, young lady. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. Sure am. A few years back, they got me started on simple acquisitions. You know those latches they put on cargo bays ain't worth a damn? These days, I stick to HQ and look after Miss Lilia. So you're the new captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Not a word. Pity. My guy in marketing is about to lose his other thumb. 
It's nice to see the unreliable again. A useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. Is Ada still at the helm? I don't know how many times I told Hawthorne to restore that smartass to factory settings. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings, but there's a catch. Just like in the serials. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? First, an embargo that's been active ever since the board pulled its forces off-world. Few regulations, plenty of freedom. And second, all the goodies that no one had time to pack. I like that initiative, but ease back on the throttle. Gladys at the rest and go might have what you need. If there's anything else, be quick about it. Time is bits. These days, the scrap business all but runs itself. Gives me the time to expand our interests into other sectors, where I can let my hair down. Our field is persuasive acquisitions. At least, that's how my legal advisors tell me to phrase it. Not all of our salvage is abandoned when we find it. Sometimes it takes a polite conversation and a shot across the bow. You know, legal formalities. Thank you. I work hard to keep it that way. Hey, careful with the C word around here. I like to keep things above board, and that kind of talk only makes trouble. Sublight occupies a legal blind spot. No one knows what we're licensed to do, and that gives our little business some freedom. But let's not tempt fate. Very. I have this thing about numbers in spreadsheets. Grids in general. I like to think of myself as the last honest businesswoman in Halcyon, but I'll settle for being the most organized one. Ask. Be seeing you. Make sure you aren't followed on your way out. You don't seem to like traveling with us much. Why in the architect's name would you say that? It's just that you're real... grouchy. Kinda all the time? I'm not grouchy, I'm just, just irritated by inane questions. Yeah, see, when you say it like that, it makes me wonder. If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. Straight to the point, eh? Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. Those board folk are real prideful-like. Never want you looking behind the curtain, lest you see their derrieres. But old Gladys knows the score. The whole colony's not much more than a diorama, showcasing one board screw-up after another. That's why we gotta keep them from getting their grubby mitts on Groundbreaker. She's our mess. Probably. Every once in a while, we get these snippets of radio chatter. Edna shows them to me. Some man hooting and hollering about the light in us all. Claims he's transmitting from Monarch, but who knows if that's true. Might be true. Might be some new trick from the board. 
Anytime, sweetheart. The last day of this posting can't come. Ah, the board. Organized, efficient, competent. Well, mostly. I think everything in here is worth more than I've made in my whole life. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? I impounded Alex's ship, not yours. Well, I guess it's yours now if you're captaining it. It's a... a game we play, he and I. I ask him to turn in Phineas Wells, he tells me he will soon. I impound his ship, he explains why he can't give me the info right now. I ask him to turn in Wells. Around and around we go. Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? No! How dreadful. That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... their droppings. Fine. You're free to go. I've removed the impound order on your ship. But before you go, I did have one request. Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. Well, Alex knew, or he said he did. And you have his ship. Maybe he kept some records around, or a conveniently placed note on his bedside table. What? All right, I suppose. Uh, how might I assuage your fears? Whom else would I work for? Those sublight thugs? That Tennyson woman? The sweaty masses in the groundside townships? The board is the only force for order in this rough and tumble colony of ours. Without them, we'd all starve to death or meet our end in a canid's jaws. That's a curious question. I can't say I've ever considered how my personal satisfaction factors into the work I do. Permit me to answer your question in another way. In Byzantium, I was one among many. I often felt, uh, lost in the hurry and expanse of the capital. Here I have a measure of power and suffer little oversight. It makes for a different kind of loneliness, but it's one I've found I can endure. I understand. And I would ask the same of you, but I suspect... Well... I suspect I'd find your answers less than satisfactory, wouldn't I? That's an unusual rhetorical tactic, but I admire your frankness. And your gumption. Yes, do tell. Indeed. And 
you know where he is? Excelsior! An apprehension of this caliber will be tremendous for my career. I'll send you straight away to my superiors in Byzantium, only... Oh, la, Oh, no. Just a teensy one. The teensiest. Nothing to, uh, lie awake worrying about for nights on end or anything. <laughs> the thing is, I needed money. A lot of money. Quickly, for reasons. I might have pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fence here on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the, uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. To give away something so important to you, there must have been some curious reasons. I'll thank you not to question my motives, young miss. It was a mistake, and I'd like to put it behind me. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral character. I was going to buy it back once I raised the capital. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. That's the long and short of it, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm certain Gladys can be made... Well, can probably be made to see reason. <laughs> I'll be waiting eagerly for your return. Now, is there any way in which I might assist you? Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. That's not unreasonable. I guess it's better than losing your organs, but... I don't know, Captain. It just doesn't seem right. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? You might be surprised, but we'll proceed on the assumption she'll be reasonable. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or can I return to my work? Be my guest. A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Oh, good love, of course not. He'd never set foot on this decrepit junk pile. As this office is the primary embassy for the board on Groundbreaker, corporate bylaws specifically state a room must be maintained for the Chairman's exclusive use. Good law! Who'd want to go to that toxic hell pit? No. Emphatically no. Unequivocally no. Immutably no. Best to be clear, I believe. You refer to the radiator issue? Oh, goodness, it was dreadful. I was sweating constantly. Chief Tennyson certainly did take her time resolving it. Gracious, no. I can't imagine what gave you that idea. I only facilitated communication between the board and Chief Tennyson. It's not my fault she was stubborn. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. She did everything she could. It was your people's fault, not June Lay's. <laughs> my, aren't you... Mm, excitable. Oh, sweetie. I don't owe a grease-stained wrench jockey like her the time of day, let alone my deference. I'm sorry my temper got away from me. Please accept my sincerest apologies to you and your friend. Oh, I'm not used to folks saying sorry. Um, it's... it's not all right exactly, but I appreciate the apology, I guess? Well... Now that that's dealt with, was there anything else you wanted to discuss?
Is it Mr. Wells, the fellow who woke you? How bad could he be? Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That ought to make you smile for once, huh? Nothing makes me happier than being even. Except being right. That's nice, too. The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment, but I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. You won't be sorry, though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. Dr. Fenhill, glad you opted to join us. It'll be good to have a Sawbones on the crew. It's almost time for today's episode of The Chairman's Children. Care to listen with me? Depends. What are you planning to do with it? See the lights. Taking a show or two at the infamous Bijou. Could be a treat if you like that kind of thing. All right, I'll sell it to you. But it's gonna cost you dear. Anything else, dear? I found a handsome ceramic mandapillar at a salvage auction last week. Miss Ellie, or uh, Dr. Fenhill, I noticed your pistol's been making a piece. What are you talking about? I oil it every night. But look here. Your slide's not recoiling fully. You might be due for a new spring. I could take a look, maybe fix it for you. Uh, sure. I'm short on bits at the moment, but I'll pay you back. Oh, no. I mean, it don't cost nothing. I got a spare spring in my pocket here, even. Everything's got a price. Hey, you got a second? Fancy running into you again. Don't mind me. It's just admiring your ship from up close. 
Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious. You're giving me a shot. All right. Uh, hang on. Hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there. I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang. Yeah, it's a second draft. Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> Sorry. He's funny. Uh, secondly, I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Additionally, I have several years. Wait, what? I, you sure? I was kind of on a hot streak. Additionally, I have several years of experience as a box hauler. This skill may come in handy if you need a body dragged away or a door held open while escaping enemy fire. In conclusion, thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. I look forward to our adventures together. I thought that was real good, Felix. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think? Am I in? The fun kind? I mean, what else do you do when you got a ship of your own? Wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. You're not gonna regret this. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is gonna be great. Well, this'll be interesting, huh? different from the ones I've seen. Shouldn't be so hard to get it patched up, though. Perfect spot for some peace and quiet.
Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Yes, Captain. Beginning playback now. There's... there's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth, the unemployed. For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. What? Uh, no, 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 no! Captain. We are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Vaughn Cortez, and Orson Shaw. Mm-hmm. Captain. A word, Captain? This Roseway business smells. 
Something tells me things didn't end well for the guy who made the distress call, and whoever or whatever got him will be waiting for us. What's there to know, Captain? Shady corporate town caught up in shady corporate shit. Tough luck for them, but maybe an opportunity for us. I'm counting on it. Anyway, we might as well take a look out there, see if we can get the jump on whoever's waiting for us. No security. Not that I'm complaining. like we missed the fun. I done had enough of this shit. I'm just the fucking tarmac guard. No one said nothing about fighting no raps. Somehow, I'm not reassured, Captain. Yeah, you and me both, ma'am. Distress call from here? Shit. They told me that weren't allowed. Got me. I just do what I'm told, and I was told not to do such. Scientist, name of Anton Crane. Someone said he's panicking inside the comm center. Alarms went off, raps broke loose, and I hightailed it in here to get a wall between me and them beasts. Um... Forget I said anything about that. Wish they tasted like Sissy Pig. <laughs> Them's good eating. Some say chicken. I say the north end of a southbound woolly cow. Anything else you'd like to know? Oh, before I forget, 
Anticleos makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. Better than nature. Not like that crap Spacer's Choice pedals. You've come to end my life. Let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? What? I, um, I'm Anton Crane, the lead scientist here. I must apologize if my call diverted you. I, uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. I'm not at liberty to discuss the nature of the work I'm doing here. Suffice it to say that its importance to me, uh, to the colony, is immeasurable. My research may not quite fall within legal parameters, so I'm under orders to maintain wireless silence. However, having your head used as target practice can addle one's thinking. I cut the call immediately once I'd gathered my wits. The Home Office can't know what's happening here. Captain's got your best interests at heart, mister. Honest. I suppose it can't hurt. If I don't get that research back, my life is over regardless. We were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Not just any diet toothpaste, the ultimate diet toothpaste. Oh, I'm certain it could be made into that as well, with only a few changes to its molecular composition. But you're missing the point. Let's focus for a moment, shall we? Even if you disregard the obvious value of Auntie Cleo's Apazap diet toothpaste in and of itself, we're talking about my career here as well. Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us, shot up our labs and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. Yes, but don't kill their mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and key card. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original... by the Grand Architect. Jameson, he's in the old lab. My protege. I sent him to retrieve some metabolic precursors, and I forgot him. That would surely lighten the weight on my conscience, as I am held to account for the well-being of every scientist here. Too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name, as it were. And far too much paperwork. Of course they do. Please don't mistake my ambition for callousness. If my colleagues refuse to take their lives seriously, why should I? All they do is complain. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. Believe what you will, but I'm not the manipulative, ego-driven person you think me to be. I'm not.
I don't know about Dr. Crane's research, but we ought to find Mr. Jameson. He's got to be all alone and scared. You picked a hell of a day to visit. I'm Vaughn. Vaughn Cortez. Uh, Dr. Vaughn Cortez. But just Vaughn's fine, really. Over in the main labs. I rabbited back here when I realized I was hearing gunshots, not blown fuses. We've been cooped up in here, I don't know, hours? Too long. I have to get back to, to work. Uh, Dr. Crane might say otherwise. Me? When those guys started shooting the place up, I was first out the door. I had to leave an experiment running at the lab. Something I've been working on a long while. Something that could really get me ahead. Know what I mean? Why? Are you heading to the lab? Because that would be... I've been extracting organic compounds from raptodons. Compounds that have... Um, benefits. Extract and how? No, wait, maybe I don't want to know. In certain social situations. Personal situations. Where you might want to, um, enhance your charisma. Oh, for... He's making enraptured, Captain. An aphrodisiac. Wrapped musk is the main ingredient. What? No? I mean, yes, I'm getting the musk. With Monarch Embargo, the price is sky high. But I'm not making the drug. The results are outside the margin of error. Technically. Sure. Of course. Our lab's south of here, down the road. Not the old public lab, the one past that, built into the mountainside. Uh, don't mention this to Anton, okay? He's kind of a tight ass about the lab. Like, squeeze coal into diamond tight. My equipment's in the lower levels, way in the back. I have a big room all to myself. Dissection tables and whatnot. It should have been running this whole time. Just grab the results and bring them here. If you have a buyer. I got a contact who wants to haul the entire batch to Byzantium. Help me out, I'll cut you in for a share. I'll even pay you before I am, when you deliver to me. Great! <sighs> this is really gonna save my ass. So, hoping to score some free samples? I've stayed in worse. Ah, outlaws, I assume. Do me a favor and let me finish this, will you? And then... Make it quick, please. Oh, you aren't with the outlaws? Who are you then? Oh, well, good luck. Now, if we got the carpet in here, it's just a matter of... Ah, Orson, you idiot. Just put it... Ah. Of course, because I didn't... Oh! You're still here. If you haven't already, you might speak to Anton. He can point you in the right direction. Now, if we got the carpet... What does it look like? I'm preparing a personal defense device. Or trying to, anyway. I... Why, yes. I suppose I could. Thanks. Certainly not. But Porter and his goons are busy with the outlaws, and Anton's busy holding his head in his hands. Seems as good a time as any to get a bit of work done. No. Uh, well, yes. Well, no. Uh, perhaps. I left schematics in our storage facility. As far as I know, the security commander hasn't found them yet. I admit I'd feel better were they returned to me. Out the south gate. Follow the road, it'll be on the left, past the old lab. 
Say, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a tube of thermal paste on you, would you? Blast. Well, good luck. I hope I see you back here in one piece. What can I... Yeah, I ain't gonna make no comment on anything like that. Oh, before I forget.
Makes you wonder about their labs. Processing. System.
something valuable in plain sight.
really told you which way's Edgewater. Seems a shame to cut him down. Share is making my nose itch. I'll keep it down. Gotta be where Mr. James is. I hope he's okay. Tempt us. Why'd they lock it up?
on what shuts him up first, a hungry rat or my backhand. Someone lift the lockdown? What? How the hell did you get in here? No, not... I don't care about the beasts. I care about the front door. This is an egregious breach of protocol. How'd you get in? Damnable beasts. At least I'm not trapped here anymore. I'll see you back at town.
The mysterious doors are the funnest sorts of doors. After you.
Hey! You! Over here! Oh, good. You're not shooting at me. That's a start. It's been a bit of a day, so I'll get to the point. Yes, I have Crane's research. No, I'm not giving it back. Sorry to disappoint you. I suppose it does not matter. Either Crane sent you, or you are some scavenger come to rob me in my moment of weakness. Let's make a deal. I'd like to go on living. You'd probably like to make some money. Help me get out of here, and I will pay you for your trouble. You mean other than the satisfaction of doing me a good turn? Trust me, I'll make it worth your while. I am good for my word. You will be equitably rewarded, on my honor. But I will not haggle or bargain with you until you help me. Same reason you are, more than likely. I imagine we picked up the same tip. Secret research facility, abandoned town, minimal security. No, but it is a secret. Well hidden. Off the map. Any place worth hiding is worth raiding. Granted, diet toothpaste is not exactly what comes to mind when I imagine secret research in underground labs. Diet toothpaste. Can you imagine a more pernicious example of corporate materialism? I do not know what is worse. Working here, or dying here. What matters is that I have been lied to. I was led to believe this was a high-priority corporate facility hiding valuable research. This job was not supposed to end with me stuck in some wretched lab smelling like rats. So I would be very much obliged if you gave me a break. You mean other than the satisfaction of... The first thing I need is a key card to unlock my door. Then I'd need you to clear me a path out of here. There are two ways out. The quickest is through the front door, but Clio Security's bottled up in there. If you don't want to shoot them, I suppose you could talk to them. The other way out is through the loading bay, but you'd have to clear out the rafts for me. Then I could just slip out the back, sight unseen. So you lied about not knowing Crane. I suppose I do not blame you. We liberated that research. We did not steal it. And yes, a few scientists were caught in the crossfire. You misreckon me. My conscience is what keeps me from throwing in with these corporate parasites. I would rather die than spend my life in a lab coat researching diet toothpaste. It is my one bargaining chip. If you want this research, you will help me out of this mess. You might be the first stroke of luck I've had all day. Thank you. I'm in your debt. Nothing beyond the purview of a talented freelancer like you. You really expect me to just let them pass? Why? So they can regroup behind their walls and mount another assault? Never mind. I'm obviously in no position to argue with you. If you can talk those guards into standing down, my people will follow suit. I'll... A raptodon is an apex predator, native to the jungles of Monarch. They are entirely unsuited to life on Terra too, which may account for their horrible temper and appetite. What? Do not give me that look. I am allowed to have hobbies. Biology happens to be one of them. Yes, we accidentally released the Raps into the world when we attacked this place. But I am not at fault here. Those scientists had no business experimenting on these creatures. 
The Rapts took us by surprise, as they would anyone. My crew were split apart and lost in the corridors. They went one way, I went another. You'll need a keycard to unlock my door. I don't know where they're kept, but I'd start by checking the security office. Take your time. I am, to my chagrin, not going anywhere. everything. Huh? You must think me a fool. I was watching on the security cameras. You got downright friendly with the outlaw leader. I reckon we got nothing to say to each other. You best back yourself out of here. Nice and slow. You got one minute. Starting now. You convinced her to let us leave in peace. Listing the ills we've been done ain't exactly putting me in a mind to compromise. <laughs> Don't reckon the company's gonna see it that way. Don't know how much that'll help, but I appreciate it. I reckon I don't see any better solution. Fine, damn it. We'll pull out. Here, my key card. It'll get you access to the whole place. Full stakes, people. We're heading back to town. I've never been so pleased at the sight of an open door. Please tell me you've cleared a way out of here. So you have. I am much obliged. And now, if you do not mind, I have had quite enough of this wretched place. And why, pray tell, would I do a thing like that? Your point is well taken. I would rather not spend the rest of my days looking over my shoulder for the shadow of my headhunter. Here, take the damned research. Tell Crane I hope he chokes on it. Good. I never trust a freelancer who works for free. Orphans. Is that what you are calling yourself now? Here. Let it never be said that I do not reward good work.
Oh my gosh. This is... I'm sure we don't gotta walk through that.
picked the wrong Stop. damn day. What's left there that's worth dying for? You let them get away. Worthless. The lot of you. Well, you get what you pay for, don't you? Doc Crane better get over himself. That no-account fool Porter and his crew are even more worthless than I could have imagined. They've abandoned their posts. This is madness. That's all manner of distressing. There truly is nothing left for me. Did you find my colleague, Jameson? Jameson. I didn't do right by him, did I? Only cared about how he helped or hurt my research. Not in this colony, there isn't. But success here will get me to Byzantium. I'll have recognition, money, proper facilities. It's the only place to lead a life of meaning in the system. Please. Why do you seem familiar? Have we met? I am Orson Shaw, Chief Behavior... Wait. Yes, I'm quite sure we've met. My apologies. Have you retrieved my schematics yet? What a relief. You hold months of work in your hands. Anton would have just given them to Porter without a second thought. What a waste of potential that would have been. Hmm. Sadly true. Contraband does tend to fetch a high price among the colony's ne'er-do-wells. So be it. I'll buy them off of you. Much obliged. Here are your bids. Now, let's see here. Attach this, twist that, apply a little pressure, and... Voila! I can finally call this little side project complete. Thank the law. Oh. Hmm. I can't be caught with this. Uh, you take it. If R&D buys the schematics from me, perhaps I'll get you the first model, hot off the presses. I'll, uh, call you? Yes, I'll call you. Any news on the thing we spoke about? You know, that thing? Sure, what? Hey, don't keep me in suspense. Did you get my stuff? I mean, not mine. It's for other parties, buyers. This is gonna make me so popular. I mean, with the people who buy it, not by using it, because I'm not. Take this. You earned it. If you run into me again after all this is over, maybe I'll have more. Pleasure doing business with you. Better days are coming. I can smell the money. Wait, no, that's Raptodon Musk.
Thanks for getting me out of there. Oh, we turned the old lab into storage a long time ago. Anton needed someone to fetch precursors, and when Anton needs someone to fetch something, that someone is invariably me. About being an assistant? No, I suppose I'm not. I know as much about this stuff as Anton does, but I'm treated like a child. You know what it's like being shackled despite my potential? Frustrating, that's what. Hey, Captain, can I get your temperature on something real quick? What? No. If it were, I'd be hollering loud enough to wake the dead. So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well, she sent me a poem. One she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it, because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good, but real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and lays one hand on it. And the trouble goes away. It sings. I don't want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and... I'm the lady? It's a real romantic poem. It made my chest hurt, kinda. I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't, I just don't care for it. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't... They said I was cold. Thanks, Captain. That makes me feel a touch better. I actually had another message from Jun Lei. I just... Couldn't work up the courage to open it. But I'm gonna change that. Right now. Okay. Here we go. Let's see here. Talking about old friends. Got to thinking... Isabel? Who's... who's Isabel? They were... close, Captain. Like, more than friends close. I don't know. June Lei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Last week? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we maybe head to the Groundbreaker? Get some drinks at that bar there? The Lost Hope? Thanks, Captain. I'll be ready.
Destination reached. Scylla. As I've repeatedly said, I was assigned there as a vicar. I was not a prisoner. I just can't believe you'd lie. I was not lying. It had no bearing on my ability to minister to my flock, and was therefore not worth mentioning.
Shut up now, and you might get out of this alive. Can we hurry this up? me. No big deal. Just shrugging off my injuries as I stroll away from another flaming impact crater. Also detecting constipation. Hair loss is fertility due to tight trousers. Recommend stimulant injection. Hair loss? You think that's bad. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. Not a damned one! I'm a free man. There isn't a corporate snake that can hold down the inimitable Captain Irion. Supposed to be for the Groundbreaker, but getting shot tends to hinder one's delivery plans. <laughs> Hey, who are you calling bootleg? I'll have you know, these are 100% genuine stolen drugs. Because the board, in all their herpetological wisdom, will only sell the meds at a huge markup. Groundbreaker knows better than to pay board prices. Not when they've got me running for them. More importantly, they can't afford to. The one and only. 
Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I wager she told you to say that, the sly old bird. I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automechs are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Hey there! Got word on the wireless. Your flag's cleared, you're free to go. Hope you enjoyed your time on Groundbreaker, the last free port of call in all the colony. We don't need luck, we got June Lay. Bye now. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. My comm center already got an update ping from the backup relay. I trust everything went smoothly. Thanks. Hmm, that's odd. The only messages in the queue are encrypted ones. Looking at the transmission logs, the relay hasn't received a single unencrypted message in the past 36 months. Must be on account of some new security red tape. Well, whatever's the cause, the board and the Earth Minister will see it sorted. Thanks again for saving my derriere. I secured quite the payment authorization for you from Chief Jun Lei. Try not to spend it all in one place. Okay, so, what are we drinking? You're the expert. Oh, and don't worry on the price. I got this. Let's just do it proper. Oh, no, that's just, that's on account of my not being able to sleep lately. Makes my hands all twitchy, you know? I've just been lying awake, thinking about what Jun Lei said, and feeling my heart shake.
Well, that's fruit and such, right? Okay, wine it is. Bottoms up. Purpleberry wine's all right if you require a sweetness to your spirits. It seems like a drink that would suit you, Miss Holcomb. Just mind how much you imbibe. Wow, this is really kind of nice, actually. Who'd have guessed old fruit could taste so good? Oh, Captain. I'm pining for June like something fierce. What am I doing? You're funny. <sighs> yeah, I guess we're doing that, aren't we? Crewing together, seeing the stars. It's like something out of a cereal. I like the ones with grand romances. And I think... I think I'm flubbing mine. I don't know what to do about... us. Well, she talked about another girl, right? Isabel. Mentioned her by name and everything, like she wanted me to know. Maybe I've been making a right fool of myself this whole time. Maybe she's not interested after all. Uh, I, I don't know, I'd call it, uh, sensual. That's a lot. It did. Oh dear, I hadn't really... Oh my goodness. And I told you? As an avid reader and collector of rare tomes, I believe I ought to have a look at this specimen of literary self-expression. It was real long and rambly. She was telling me a story about her dad, how a lady named Isabel did all sorts of things to try to win his favor. This Isabel lady never quite managed to get her dad's approval, but they carried on anyways. Made something good out of a bad situation. Then it all went down the tubes. Do you think Junlei still has feelings for her? I just got a lot of feelings, Captain, and they're all climbing up my throat. I, I need another drink. Right now. Before I lose my nerve. <laughs> Come on, Captain! I'm here to drink! Okay, maybe you're right. I am a little woozy. Hydration, here I come. Good call. It's best to proceed with a light hand the first time. Shush you. Oh, Captain, I want to talk to Junlei all the time. Even about silly things, but I'm so scared. Um, everything? I got a solar system's worth of terrifying questions swirling around my head. Does she think I'm as pretty as I think she's handsome? What if she doesn't like me? What if she does? What if she's still got feelings for that lady, Isabel? What if we... we get together and... she gets bored of me? Oh, there's nothing easy about... about spilling your guts to the person who's got your heart in their hands. You know I'm not interested in physical affection. That's... Well, it's tripped folks up in the past. Folks I thought cared about me for me. What if she's not okay with that? What if she is, but then later, she's not? What do you mean, Captain? So I should just be myself? You sound like my dad. It's sweet. Gosh, I don't know that I got that in me. Sometimes I feel real mean inside, Captain. I think ungenerous thoughts. Well, I suppose so, but I, I want to be my best self for her. A good person worth caring for. Well, Captain, this has been... This has been a whole lot. I got just... Wow. So much to think about. Oh, gosh. I... I don't know, Captain. Do you think I should? All right, all right. There's no need to strip your screws over it. Okay. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask June out. Just as soon as we get back to the ship. I mean, probably. Eventually. Thanks for hearing me out and giving me counsel. And, well, for being a friend. 
It means a whole lot. You're good people, Captain. Well, it's not like I could be elsewhere. Nor am I capable of neglecting a wayward lamb in need of guidance. Huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're real good friends, you know that? I wish... I wish there was a place we could all live quiet together. Come on, let's go. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regular... Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? My stars, what a find. Fine picking like this deserves an equally fine payout. Go on, dearie, and don't spend it all in one place. A shame you didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a batch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. If Auntie Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. Bless your slippery little fingers. Isn't that just a shame? Prototype schematics go for a fair handful of bits around here. Are you positive? Honest to goodness? Can't say I wasn't hoping for more, but... I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit any time. Yes, dear. Which off... Suit yourself. I've got a lovely little thro...
Gracious. I was just sitting down for tea. Yeah. Fantastic. Do be careful with it, dear, as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire. You should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a tear. You'll love her. Now, was there anything else? Anytime, sweetheart. Monarchs and moon. I think it counts anyhow. Monarch is a wretched hive of terrorism and anarchy. We'd best top off our ammo stock before we leave. If this is something Tobias could handle. See yourself out the door. Sure is. Welcome aboard, contractor. One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. We arranged a drop at the Saltuna Warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. A few of my contractors run flights in there and out again, working around the board embargo. We keep the community lubricated with a steady supply of booze and unconventional erotica. Byzantium kids with more money than sense can thank Sublight for their good time. One of my guys filmed a Raptodon grinding on an auto mech. Didn't end well for anyone, including the cameraman. When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off-world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff. Acid for the nucleon in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. Ah, yes, Alta Vitae. I knew someone who inhaled it by accident. I'd never seen anybody spontaneously combust before. I see your friend here is the brains of the operation. Good. Every salvage crew needs one. Now, get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes on the back of your head. Understood? Don't go looking for anything, except salvage. Just watch out. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. Well, that set me at ease.
Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun, and I tried some things I never would have otherwise. Some of the drinks we tried I even liked. I guess it's not all disgusting. And I don't feel it today. I guess that water must have worked. I'm glad I had you looking out for me. I messaged Jun Lei when we got back and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it, otherwise I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like, I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. Oh, isn't she sweet? Like one of those two-bit romances where one soul's all stiff and formal and... I should be glad to perhaps take hold of your hand, miss. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain. Impeccable timing, Captain. I was about to watch the latest episode in Halcyon Helen's thrilling serial adventure. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? I don't believe so, Captain. Transmission incoming. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills.
Hey, hold on there. I gotta sign you in. I don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. Wish more folk could say that. It gets awful quiet guarding a landing pad that never gets used. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Aww, don't be like that. I never get to do this part. Please. Well, there's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Ah, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day-to-day -day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment. Signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Do you want to talk to the boss? She's in the back of the warehouse. Fresh blood at last. Stellar Bay could use them. laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? What I am doing, sir, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. And how should they know what they're missing? I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's Best and all the cereals, before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Yes, free to wallow and squalor together. Free to squabble with the iconoclasts over a raptodon-infested hellhole. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? Bastard slippery, right? 
on account of its blood. So it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. Don't interrupt, it's rude. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby rap's stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I, shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn rapt out there. Right, what are you staring, wait, you ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Another in a long line of damn fools trying to cut me off. I'll buy my own poison then. What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Oof. Some hell you've chosen. You must really love fish. That is a fucking shame. Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. More than you have, I suspect. I plan to sit here and drink until I find myself awoke and sober. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Well, well. It isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drink's on me, stranger. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nioka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few and tell it them myself. Now what can I do for you? Something else? Not since Amber Heights. These days we have more leaving than coming. Off to join the Iconoclasts or some such. Bunch of marauders broke into the executive compound, slaughtered everyone. Corporations pulled out of Monarch not long after. I thought everyone knew, but then that was ten years ago. Still feels fresh to us every time we look at our walls, though. But it had a fancy ring to it. Name's the first advertising anyone sees, after all. Nope. But a man can dream. Anyone who spends any amount of time in this bar is bound to get to know Nioka. On account of her being here so often herself. And I don't mean that unkindly. Anyone who's rid us of as many beasts as you have is entitled to a few drinks.
What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock feels... We're not the best equipped. The scouting for rats keeps us on our toes. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix a thing his own self, and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on a raptid on acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Yes, that's it. Channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are 
precarious. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Mr. Vicker, I don't want to be rude, but I don't think that means anything. Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Returning to the board is your only chance if you hope to survive here on Monarch. That doesn't mean it'll be easily achievable. Indeed not. No worthwhile plan was ever simple. That's what I always say. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Wrap mask and canid eyes, right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptodon acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. You smite at her. Smoot? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for rapted on tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. 
Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Oh, have you talked to him? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a day with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. Well, well. The only new folk I ever see in town are sublight runners from Fallbrook. But you don't look like one of Catherine's. What can I get you? All sales are final. Please, I need your help. I, I can pay. Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Don't you tell me to calm down. I promised my boy I'd protect him for always. But how can I keep him safe if he's run away? He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? Please, won't you go and find my boy? 
Well, I, I, I guess I can't ask you to leave the town walls for free. It is deathly dangerous out there. I got some bits saved up for a rainy day. I'll give you every last one if you just bring my Tucker back to me. I won't even be mad at him running off. You tell him I, I won't be mad. He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. We're not the best equipped. Scouting for rap keeps us on our toes. If Selma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own cathanoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Sorry, I've got to get back to the... Hello, dearie. Why, well, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Who's your lucky friend, dearie? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Aren't you a naughty boy? There are no discounts here, but uh, Auntie knows what to do with mischievous men like you. Oh, I'd have to talk to Mr. Nandi about you, of course. Anyway, is there anyone else needing a pickup from Auntie Abigail? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. Well, this certainly isn't worth my good health. I'll get you a dose, but I'll have you know, I'm very disappointed in you. 
There, and good riddance. That's the last help you're getting from Abigail Edwards. Well, must seem out of sorts to you. It's always great. Ah, the charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business. All of the above. More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it in. Ooh, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. Stellar Bay had a vicar once. He took it upon himself to convince Graham's folk to come back to the corporate fold. Kept making the trip between the city and Amber Heights by foot. Kept getting himself into all sorts of scrapes. Day came when I found a book of his in the middle of a rapt encampment. Hand still gripping it, too. The plan unfolds as the plan unfolds. To Vicar and Layman alike. A vicar, huh? You a true believer, or do you just like the tide? Why, that's borderline offensive, Miss Reverie Wentworth. Of course I believe. The tides are merely a well-earned bonus. I met another believer once. Pushy type. He thought he'd been left behind for a reason. Thought he'd find some kind of cosmic truth in the wilderness. 
got himself infected by a mantis and drowned in a sulfur pool. Some truth. Can't get more brutally true than survival of the fittest. But don't mistake us all for blind fools. Intellect plays a large part in who stays among the living. Glad to hear it. I think I'm gonna be sick. I clean the apartments while everyone's at work. I've seen all sorts of messes, but this... If you're going into the apartments, do not go into the lower one on the right. That's where the body is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go contemplate a hot shower. Bay ain't safe these days. What's the world coming to? You're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Mammoths. I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Ha, <laughs> maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda. Like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes them real hard to watch. Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow even if he did have terrible teeth. Right, so the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Good. Someone's gotta. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Velma's gonna be extra cranky if she doesn't get her back. You ever 
think about what goes on in a marauder's head? No, they're crazy. But they still manage to feed themselves, dress themselves, work together. Gotta be something of that. Hey, Max, what does your religion say happens to us after we die? The body returns to the universe from whence it came. I'm sure you've seen a corpse in the various stages of decay. Why do we exist in the first place, then? What the hell's the point? Our lives contribute to the betterment of the human race. Everyone has a part to play for the greater advancement. I ain't got a part. Life ain't a damn cereal. You helped people survive the monarch evacuation, did you not? Perhaps one of them will go on. Hey! What are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? Wow, most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine, we're going. This ain't worth it. Hmm? Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nyoka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. It really was on my to-do list. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Hey, Velma, I got your cappanoid pills. You're a lifesaver. Hope Abigail didn't give you a hard time. Just the usual. Any word on Braxton? Nothing. I don't know how much longer I can cover for him either. Give me those pills, will ya? Here you go. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. No, I paid Sublight for it, so it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Sure can. 
if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. I got a feeling you and Catherine would get on like tumors on a pig. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind? Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. I can't keep working double shifts either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job. Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. She's principled, in at least this area. I will begrudgingly give her that. Thank you. I think. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Maybe so, but I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then he'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk, but if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Fine by- Stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we used for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the Saltuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Sorry, I just get so excited and I always feel like I miss everything that happens in town while I'm up here. It's signed by Bertie Blackhole. Everyone's heard of him. He oh, you're real funny. Guess I don't feel so bad for missing what goes on in the rest of Stellar Bay. Would you look at that? 
The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. Would you keep the board around? Of course. Even with all their faults, they are the best chance to maintain order in the colony. I suppose I can appreciate the structure of things. As long as the folks at the top have got the right heads on their shoulders. Whatever you do, don't mention toss ball to Isaac. You'll never hear the end of it. You know, I haven't seen it. Oh! You startled me! Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. No! Okay, maybe, just a little... Braxton always has a good stash, and I just like to let loose a little. Stop thinking about the Marauders and the Raptodons outside, you know? Oh, damn. He told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell, and revel with us? Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. I don't see how. When Sanjar took over MSI, he tossed all the old corporate rules. We ain't required no more to work whatever job the company demands. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? I never meant to call for anyone's head on a pike. Velma's not my favorite person, but she ain't been cruel to us. Devil it all. Now you got me feeling sorry for her. Fine. I guess we'll go back to work to save Velma's job. We'll find a better time to negotiate our wages. Tell Velma not to worry. We'll look out for her. We don't get many outsiders. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Who spat in your spirits, Velma? You notice my mood? 
I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? You knocked any sense into him yet? Well, that's awful nice of him. Sure wouldn't have expected that. Thanks for your help. You've gotten me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Something else on your mind? Stealing such and Sounds like rat did here. Oh, it does work. I bought some musk from Sebastian. Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. Well, we'll see about that. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Really? Here I was stealing myself for inevitable rejection. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years, and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. I saw it happen. 
Hell, one of them was in my arms at the time. His name was Hayes, and he's our first stop. I buried him a ways from our encampment. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to Barry. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Hold on to your hats, children. This ride is about to get ugly. Right. Here's the road. Follow it south. Visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in. Come in. I'm getting real bad fight or flight right now. Watch your step. People ain't this friendly outside city walls. I, for one, welcome a reprieve from our travels. That is, if you'll have us, kind sir. That's the spirit. 
Now come in. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The Raptodons and Marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. Something ain't right about this. Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? Sorry, I'm not real good with, uh, names. It just gets hard to remember things. I recall moments, feelings, but the details slip. Other times, it's like there's fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? Hey, what are you doing in my room? Liar! You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you? The ones that come in a bottle with a rocket ship on it, like the other man used to bring. I'm not telling you. There you are. We're all ready. Just waiting on you. Been poking around, have you? Ah, well. We were going to take you up there eventually. That's where we store the leftovers. Coming! I'm gonna put the ball! Asshole. Ain't enough that the rats eat everyone? Now people are doing it too? It is unnatural. An affront to the grand plan.
got trouble. scavenging here and a mana queen showed up then wrapped it on it was a void blasted mess i ran in here and um now the door's locked little help phew thanks mister my buddy had a key but i ain't heard him in a while he locked me in here and took off probably got munched so look for a dead guy i guess or a rat Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. What do you mean? It's locked. Get me up. Sure. Probably. I don't know. When I try to read things, my mind gets to wandering about all the things I could be doing instead.
Much obliged. Ah, oh, phew. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Nyoka. Um, you mind giving me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. What? I ain't got nothing on me. How's about a heaping helping of appreciation and respect? Ah, shit. I wouldn't have agreed to be saved if I'd known that. All right, here. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy and... <laughs> hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, mister.
Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophous truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting we're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it.
Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. The new boy! Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. May the eternal truth guide you. I don't have time for this. Damn philosophists. The folks in Amber Heights always manage to find a bottle or two of the good stuff. Keen scavengers, I tell you. What is... What kind of... Hope Zora sends you on. Ain't seen you before. You from one of the outer steads or what? You poor some bitch. I hear tell the dust storms get even worse out there. Welcome to the heart of iconoclast country, brother. In charge? Huh. <laughs> We're iconoclasts. Every soul a sovereign power. We do for each other on account of it needing to be done. Not because some fancy pants manager said to. Now you want to rephrase that question, maybe ask who's respected hereabouts, I can give you a sensible answer. Every soul here knows to keep a weather eye out. Everyone's lost somebody to the wildlife. That didn't stop Miss Zora from picking a few souls and imposing a schedule. Be here then, leave there later. Downright on icon in icon well it ain't what we do take that on top of what happened on the northern expedition she and graham are exchanging harsher words than usual when the monarchists wanted to settle down and play nice with the board graham was the one that took a stand he's the reason we're here breathing free air zora's our best sawbones nearly every soul here owes her their life She's got funny ways, but they work. Welcome to Monarch. The animals think you're tasty, the fungus thinks your lungs are a great place to plant spores. That ain't enough? Look at the sky. Olympus yanks this moon about like a drunk dancer. Storms to curl your hair and quakes to rattle your brain pan. Well, sure. It's on account of how we all work. No iconoclast makes another do as they say just because. You gotta convince them. The Graham and Zora argue all the time just says the process is working. Vigorous intellectual debate. You see? Yeah, we felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. Gonna need to buy myself an entire Rizzo plant after all this. A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. Shed the trappings of a materialistic life, Captain. 
you'll find your soul much less burdened. Also, we're broke. Yes. If we were meant to enjoy the things that glitter and shine, the universe would provide them. Damn right we can't. We're being eaten alive out here. We can't be throwing bits at... Zora, please, we'll discuss this later. I apologize. My second-in-command can be overzealous at times. Now, why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now, here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. Oh, yes. Many facilities lie abandoned in the wilderness. I believe the press could be operational again with a little elbow grease and luck. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... Forget it. Huxley's still recovering. She won't be up for a run for a while yet. It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. So you're her mysterious savior. She sings your praises. That girl and her songs, so eager to learn, so bright-eyed, so... tone-deaf. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges. Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage. Nice day, huh? A monarch, anyway. Ah, hello? All right. I'm sorry. As long as it's been, I'd still rather not speak of it. That was a painful day for us all. All people are part of the Philosophist family. I've come to accept that, along with the additional weight of their deaths. Why have you come? Never seen you before. I may not remember today tomorrow, but I damn well remember yesterday now. Wait, I mean, 
Nah, that's what I meant. Nothing on this moon for nobody. Just a lot of heartbreak. A great many things. I'll tell you what. You want to listen to an old man ramble? There might be a job in it for you. I used to run with a squad of mercenaries here. Good folk. A fella named Lamont introduced me. Thing is, I ain't seen them in an age. Stands to reason they got themselves eight. Better folk than you and me. It don't take much of a slip to end up in a sulfur pool or a rap stomach. We split ways around the time this twice fucked moon got abandoned. Thing is, I got myself some fond memories. We had some keepsakes of ours we kept in a lockbox, and I've been thinking about seeing it found. I'll be glad for it, but I ain't stupid. This planet tends to get people killed. I just want some closure. Thereabouts? Appreciate it, kid. I'm marking outposts on your map. You spend a lot of time out there. Might be a good place to start. Here's a key for the door. Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? Oh, come on. We like to be friendly around here. At the least, let me call you captain. Whether or not you command a ship, if you've found your way here, you must be a leader type. So then, captain, welcome to Amber Heights. Oh, and uh, call me Tucker. You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? I'd hope she'd accept my decision. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. Don't go play with friends. Mantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. Marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. She doesn't want to see me as anything other than her baby boy. Why would I go back again? What'll be different this time? <sighs> You're right. I can do this. I just need to stand my ground and make her see she can't control me anymore. No one can. The Iconoclasts are loyal folk. Treat them right, they'll do the same. Turn on them, they'll open fire without a second thought. Damn philosophists.
Excuse me, but this area's off limits. We got a leaky generator. It ain't safe. That's my nice way of telling you to saw it off. We're fixing a leaky generator. What's it to you? Why are you asking me questions instead of sucking sulfur? Get out of here! And I'm just gonna let you walk on in? Why is that now? Hell, I ain't gonna pass up free bits. Make it painful. Key 
Keep walking. for almost two days. Who are you anyway? Oh, for finally! Tell Graham that this is the last run I'm doing. Sanjar's declared a stop sale to you lot, but even if he hadn't, I'm not risking my neck anymore. I don't know how you got those goons to leave, but thank you. Graham ordered rollers and what's-its, right? For a printing press? Here, take them. Like I said, this is my last run. You'd have to ask him. All I know is that if I get caught, I'll get arrested. It's an enviable thing he's doing. Free people and all that. I can't live that way. I need my structure. But I respect the iconoclasts for doing it. Law help them. I don't know. Maybe Sublight can lend a hand. I should go. Look, Graham's got a bit or two left in his account. I can send one last dropout before I wash my hands of this. What do you want delivered? Yeah, I've got a few. I'll send them along. Give them all my regards. And good luck out there. Don't go getting eaten. South here, off the road and down this slope. We've got a decent trek ahead of us. new. We 
way the edges are burnt. I guess people did this, not the wild. Albrook's on the other side of the bridge there if you need a drink. We're only halfway to the mountain, so might consider stopping in. Look northwest. That ain't it, but marauders sometimes camp inside the buildings there. Steer clear unless you fancy getting shot. Westbound still. I'll let you know when we can start ascending.
I call this Rotting River, on account of all the dead things I've thrown in it over the years. That's one option. Others to slope up. You up for some fun? Let's check.
Well, Nyoka, how have you been? Better, worse, I don't know, you know? Yep. Nothing on this moon for nobody. There's a lot of heartbreak. Oh, sure. Rap job. Back before the corpse went crying back to Terra, too. Running with a different partner these days. Thought the other ones was gonna last. Yeah, well, they didn't. Yeah, I'm getting that. Apologies. Anyway, I had a herd of woolly cows back in them days. Then a pride of raps moved in and I had a lot less. Yoka cleared them out. I was a decent shot. She was better. I'm lucky to hit the broad side of a mana queen these days. You know, a tiny part, a damn stupid part of me, hoped he was still out there. What happened? Damn. Well, you find our box of memories? <laughs> well, ain't you clever. Fine. I was supposed to pick him up that night. Thing is, another offer came along. Bit more lucrative. Surely ain't. But it'll buy me some better ones. Look. I like your gumption. I was gonna share the bits, but here's a couple extra. Now go on. Leave an old man to his past. I'm telling you, the Van Noys are fine. Bullshit, Graham. They don't just abandon orders, and they weren't at the ruins. Where in this sulfur-sodden hellhole did you send them? They're on a very important... Ah, we'll continue this later. Welcome back, Captain. They're hunters. Badass ones at that. Hope they're all right. They're our best unit, and now they're missing in action. And we'll continue that discussion later. Damn it. I was hoping you'd have more sense than our venerable leader here. I get the message is important, but so's eating. Carlotta usually schedules the next drop during the meeting. When's she coming? That is most unfortunate. This cuts off one of our only two supply lines on Monarch. Sanjar, old friend, you're about to cross a dangerous line. About to? That idiot just declared war. I... we will deal with his subversion later. For now, we must redouble our efforts to spread the truth to the colony. I've already sent a team ahead to scout the press. One of our best. Meet them there and find out if they've been successful. You sent the Vanois there, didn't you? Oh, for fuck's sake, Graham! We needed them in the ruins! Our people died out there! They went willing to fight for our cause. We need reinforcements. We need new recruits. The Van Noys saw the printing facility with the same importance as I. The hell's the sense in recruiting if you're just gonna get them killed? I have the utmost confidence in their abilities. Friends, we must have faith that the men and women we recruit can handle the duties for which we recruit them. Yes, you're damn right he could have, but he's so obsessed with preaching that he's become blind to our actual problems. Look, just... If the Van Noys are still alive, get them out of there. With Sanjar pressing the issue like this, I have a feeling we'll need them.
Be careful with your new friends in Amber Heights. They're not the most reliable types. Anyway, what can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. I didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Oh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. No, I am a company man. Oh, perhaps they were right. After all, what have I built? Stellar Bay is barely keeping afloat. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. But that's exactly what this is. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the dissemination of the proper ideals and information to those in the highest echelon of society. On the contrary, I would say good documentation is for everyone. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. That's what I like to hear. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. Those bastards. Leave us to our perils, then come back just to reap what they can. If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, Bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. A foolproof plan if I ever heard one. I'll leave the execution to you. Good old Stellar Bay. The only place on the planet that don't stink of sulfur. On account of it stinking like fish instead. Thank you.
Don't mess with us! Careful. Only things you'll find in the ruins. Here they come!
it's the twins. Surprised you two needed backup. Nioka, you're a sight right now, I'll tell you what. We are up a creek. I bet. You really come this far north for a printing press? Yeah, I know, I know, but that's the mission. Don't suppose y'all are busy right now. Thank the Eternal. We could use a hand. But... We can't leave without patching these guys up. Acker here is bleeding out and Jensen can't see straight. Our medic has got our trauma kit, but we got separated. We ain't seen him in a couple of hours. Yeah, on account of giving him the order. He's searching the old settlement to the north of the press. Now. Any luck out there? Oh, fuck. Well, that's better than nothing. Thanks. We'll head out as soon as we're patched up. <laughs> hey, thanks for the help. Thanks for the assist.
are victorious.
If you'll just listen... No! No more listening! No more preaching! We are losing people left and right! We need to act! Enough, Zora. I'm not putting the torch to innocent people. Do you want to bring the board's cruisers and gunships down on us? Captain, apologies, but our situation grows dire. Our people talk of foolish endeavors. What news do you bring? They are armed all the same. All they need is a good reason, and war is one such reason. We're out of time. We need food and ammunition. We need to hit Stellar Bay while we still have the manpower to do it. It is. We are desperate. We're starving. My people are dying left and right. Yes, I know it's drastic, but it's clear that Sanjar will never cooperate. And if it's him or us, I choose us. Doubtful, but we don't need much, and Sanjar isn't going to share. It is. Excellent. Did you find the Vanois? Thank the Eternal. We're one step closer to bringing the truth to every man, woman, and child in Halcyon. This plan's brilliance is in its subtlety. For the time being, let us cease our activities on the tower, lest we bring premature attention upon us. I have much to do. Articles to write, sermons to ponder. We live in such an exciting time. Let's talk later. Sermons? For the love of... I'm going to see to the wounded. Nice day, huh? For Monarch, Eddie. Nioka! Trouble checking in? Or you might need directions to the amenities? If you're locked out of your cabin, a replacement key costs 50 bits. No reservation, no problem. Day trippers are always welcome in our saloon. Straight back and to the right. If you hit the falls, you've gone too far. Check in with Ms. Malin. She'll set you straight. I am here to anticipate and facilitate your needs, patron. Guess it's true. Fallbrook really is the best-kept secret in all of Monarch, excepting the Borst Factory's secret ingredient. We're a leisurely stopover for the more adventurous spacefaring traveler. Understand? Swell. We like quick-on-the-draw types like you. Saloon is straight back and to the right. Once you're feeling sated, you're welcome to a private cabin. Only two fifty dollars a night. Ms. Malin can let you one if you're interested. She's the one who runs this racket. You, uh, you're looking for Ms. Malin. On an errand for the boss lady? Oh, uh, that sounds ominous. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Malin won't like that a whit. She's... She's not but just down the way. A ten to one says she's either pouring drinks or skinning a sprat in the saloon. Uh, word to the wise. Ms. Malin don't take kindly to interlopers. When I said sprat... I didn't mean this sort with whiskers and a tail. Time for a round of whisk. Oh. All a round of whisking. About. Keep walking, Rodney. Take a gander at that mug. I ain't ever seen someone so adept looking my whole life. Watch yourself, Captain. This guy's got eyes like a sprat set on stealing your dinner. Ah, oh, now, come on. All I mean is, well, rather that, uh, 
You don't seem like the usual pigeons we pluck. No offense, of course, if you are a Byzantium goldblood. Say, I'd like to do you a favor. Might I interest you in a surefire scheme? Wink, wink. Don't believe I did, no? Wink. Pure and simple, it's like this. I run our drug delivery service. Recently, I had the genius idea to cut costs in half by swapping our auto loaders with faster, cheaper sprats. See? I know a fellow genius when I clap eyes on him. Too right you are. Only problem is my sprat carriers ain't arrived from their latest run. As I was saying, you look more capable than most of the hoople heads around these parts. What say you locate him and retrieve the goods for me? In return, I'll cut you 5% of the profit. I run my Sprat carriers back and forth through the shipping tunnels near the waterfall. I ought to check there first. Good luck. And uh, don't get any ideas about pilfering the drugs for yourself. Was that sarcasm? I'm going to assume it was not. If it's sarcasm, you've got to show it somehow, like with a wink. My Sprat carriers scurry back and forth through the shipping tunnels. Any trail ought to start there. When you've got the goods, I'll be here. In the mood to chat. Oh, I beg your pardon. Can you not see I'm walking here? Physically, you mean? In my mind, I have traveled galaxies. Well, it is of no consequence, I assure you. I shall embark shortly with my legs. I'm not entirely decided. If I'm being honest, I think I'd fancy a visit to Tartarus, so long as it's under the shield of my fantastical imagination. thing worse than the swill they're selling is the service. You seen Arthur today? No, but thank you. I'm quite all right as I am. Hmm? Oh, you're still here. I said I don't require anything at this time. Run along now. I've had more than enough to satisfy my thirst for one evening. Deal? A rather bad one indeed. The fella swore Fallbrook was unrivaled in its leisurely pursuits. But it seems to me the whole town is designed primarily to leech one's bits. And now that I've run dry, or nearly so, the fellas have abandoned me back to Byzantium. You wouldn't leave a friend in need, I'm sure. Don't suppose I could just ask you to scram. Can't fathom why you'd go searching her out. But it's your neck on the noose. I was told she runs the saloon. Hello, 
I need a refill. Oh, pardon. You don't work here. My dry goods come 75% guaranteed mold free. Or was that 75% mold free? Hmm. No rubbernecking. Make a buy or move on. I offer high quality and low prices. Pick one for your purchase. If you bloody it, you buy it. Store policy. Town sublight owned and run. Caters to a variety of clientele. The one you want to avoid pissing off the most is Catherine. Prove bad for her business, and she'll kneecap you without a second thought. Yeah, and? Do I look like the city planner? I wasn't exactly consulted on the blueprints when Catherine started building out Fallbrook. But now that you mention it, I reckon she had her reasons to hide us. We got smugglers, outlaws, mavericks, and Byzantium socialites flying in and out of Fallbrook all the time. Why openly spin in the board's eye? It might be that you're right. But I got no reason to trust you with the truth, now do I? Maybe if you were a better friend to Sublight... Ask me again if you're standing with Sublight and proves, and I'll feel more obliged to answer. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. Some people, but no one in this office, I assure you, might call it stupidity. Obviously too common an ailment for insurance to cover. So. What kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch. But financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can... What's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. We prefer to think of it as chasing the savings. Turns out that not having to pay kickbacks, fines, and rent in the most expensive city in Halcyon improves our liquidity. Plus, Sublight keeps this place running remarkably well, and they sure drive business our direction. Plenty. As my boss likes to say, we've insured unusually expressive eyebrows, outrageous statements, disastrous marriages. One thing's for sure, you won't find better policy protection against sudden lunar implosions anywhere in Halcyon. You don't look like a smuggler nor a dandy. Catherine send you back here? On second thought, it's best if I don't know. What's your order? No, I don't have any... Ugh. If it's only a drink you're after, the full bar's upstairs. This here's the ante up, where you place your bets. Toss ball, autoloader races, card games, you name it. 
I ain't picky. And neither is Catherine. We'll both break your legs if you lose, then shirk on paying. Hey, if it ain't the cleaner, how'd the disposal go? Was it messy? Uh-huh. You blind, fella? Or can you not see I'm busy? Why is it every sisty pig fucker who strolls into my town expects me to smile and shout awful friendly? Welcome to Fallbrook. Only nugget of paradise in this entire law-forsaken land. Like a void damn advert. Sorry to trouble you, Ms. Malin. I understand you're a terribly important figure in these parts. Perhaps you could point me to a man by the name of Reginald Cheney. That sprat shit better not have brought trouble into my town. He's a long-term renter. Easily replaceable. Check his domicile. Whatever happens, I don't fucking care. Just keep the mess from staining my little nugget of paradise, and we'll be grand. You know, I ain't heard that one before. Suppose I'll have to work harder to show you just what makes our town shine. But first, I'll need to know what brings you, stranger. Well, I'm half listening. Might be I know something about it. Might be someone hired my crew to blind drop supplies on the Northern Bridge. Might be they sure as shit weren't pirates. Now that I consider it, I ain't heard from my delivery team in far too long. Find them for me, and I'll pay you handsomely. And I'll thank you kindly for it. Good of you to finally haul your ass over here. I wired for backup weeks ago. Got something that's going to require special extraction from Cascadia. Found it on a corpse, huh? If you killed Lilia's agent, you get to explain it to her. Not me. Well, shit. I knew he'd come to a bad end one day. Still, no time for weeping and wailing. We've got a metric fuck-ton of bits worth of salvage just waiting for extraction. So you got a brain on them shoulders. Excellent. Makes my life a world easier. To extract the gas, you'll need to siphon it from the lab in Cascadia into one of your ship's fuel tanks. Totally safe. Meaning safe for me and my crew. Seeing as it ain't us undertaking the risk. Do I look like one of them egghead science types? All I know is that labs use it to create plants and livestock out of local species. But it's a controlled commodity, available only to the board. So it is of high value on the dark market. I do like your gumption, but let's not be hasty. To get to the gas, you'll need to navigate through the town, which is overrun by marauders. The lab itself has become an infested nest, crawling with mantis. You gotta fight through, or figure out some other way to exterminate them. Maybe the ventilation system? And will again. We ought to be taking any opportunity we get to bury those critters in lead. Direct and aggressive. I always did like your sensibilities. You know when to strike and when to wait. Shame what came of your crew. Crews are for ships. They were a family. Close enough. Now, after you clear the manti nest and reach the storage room, all that's left is to get the gas flowing into the fuel system. The task will require someone with technical skills. Or you could force it through with a plasma overload. Don't recommend that option, though, unless you want to get dead. Shall I inscribe that on your tombstone? Once you've got our goods, take them to the Groundbreaker. Lilia's fencers ought to handle the rest of it. I've marked the coordinates for you to the lab in Cascadia. 
On the terminal, use the passcode you got from Stellar Bay to get in. But before you make your run, I could use a heavy helping hand regarding a local issue. For a fine fee, of course. Good. This particular matter of opportunity has been eating at me for a while now. There's a Borst factory on up the way, run by a man who calls himself the King. Clive Lundberg, insufferable prick. That aside, it's a business ripe for the plucking. I want it. Clear as that. Stars, I hope so. Clive Lundberg, the self-proclaimed Borst King of Monarch is swimming in profit and drowning in his ego. He's making the only meal to be had this side of Monarch, and I'm tired of ponying up for my dinner. I want that Borst factory, owner dead or alive. And you're the soon-to-be handsomely paid son of a bitch who's gonna get it for me. If you got brass knockers, you could shoot your way through the front gate. If you don't fancy getting shot to shit, you can try asking Duncan for a disguise. Might be another way in, assuming you're courageous enough to trek the sewers. Void if I know. Hit him where it hurts. In his gut or his production lines ought to make do. Then I'd say you might care to poison the sisty pigs, doctor a few financial records, or throw a wrench in the canning machinery. Sometimes the simplest solution is the sweetest. I don't give a wit about the method or the means, just the end. It'll be more than good when you're finished. Maybe not for Clive, but for me and you, I'm sure. Oh, and if you don't fancy going in guns blazing or crawling through a sewer pipe, see Duncan in the dry goods and sundry building. He ought to have an employee ID in that stash of illicit goods he keeps for select clientele. May luck be with you, since I won't be. Folks I never met before are my most favorite kind. So, what's your story? Let me just stop you right there, stranger. My question, it's not one I really want an answer to. Not unless it accompanies some extra bits. Understand? More than you can afford at this time. Your eyes do not deceive you. This bar serves the sweetest fire water in all of Fallbrook. I got some snacks on offer too from time to time. Who ain't these days? Everything runs through Ms. Malin here, so you might start with her. Catherine's great, ain't she? She'll pull you out of the sulfur, so long as you don't mind being in her debt. Efficient. Clever. Ruth. I like her. We are powerful enough. We are powerful enough. I always imagined Fallbrick would be cleaner, fancier, better booze, cheaper. I've emptied 14 bit cards in the last two hours. That's because you got a terrible tell. 
Whenever you're lying, your right eye twitches like mad. It most certainly does not. If you're feeling like the civilized type, the waterfall's a good spot to wash your clothes. Hey, Cass. Knock, knock. Did you find them? Tell me you found my dr I mean, my Sprat carriers. Would hate should anything dire have befallen them. <laughs> Seeing as how that statement is wink free, <laughs> I am madder than a mantis swarm. And ready to bite somebody. You want your cut? You get me the rest of my drugs. No matter what it takes. Twitchy whiskers back here. Don't you run out that door. It's a cruel world outside. Out you go. Close the damn door. You'll let my sprats out. Damn it all. Now look what you've done. It'll take me ages to round him up again. State your purpose, or get out of my face, domicile intruder. Missing? Nope. Nope. Mine are all found and accounted for. Thank you kindly. Now if that'll be all. I've got an animal rescue service to oversee, and it ain't easy. Lots to do. Got a multitude of sprats to spay and feed. Look, I don't care if Nelson sent you or not. You won't be hurting a hair on any of these sprats' heads. I've killed vicious beasts for them. I ain't afraid to take on a human. Back out of this domicile, hands up, or become sprat food, intruder. You wanna dig through sprat droppings? Be my guest. Get your drugs. Then get lost. If you would please leave me and my fur babies be.
Got the goods? Cause I know you wouldn't be wasting my time otherwise. Wink. You do? I mean, you do! Of course you do! What did I tell you? Sure fire delivery system. Works almost every time. Right! Right. In my excitement, I very nearly forgot. <laughs> ha ha. As promised, you're cut. Plus a little extra to show my gratitude. Now, if there's nothing else you need from me, I must go inventory my goods. Hit me. Miss Catherine Malin is one tough lady. Show her a bit of backbone, and I swear she'll like you more for it. Ow! What the... What was that for? You're nuttier than Miss Malin. Cripes. Remind me never to cross you. Though, you put that mean right hook to good use getting my drugs, and I'll be more than happy. Sure it is. Wink. Hello there. A word, if I may be so bold? Well now, here I thought those mantisaurs had peacefully exited the premises. But you're a simpler explanation. Thanks for the assistance. Name's Weston. Every once in a while, I set up shop along these here roads. You find yourself in need of resupply, you come on by. Care to purchase a thing or two?
stake my reputation on this being an ambush. Keep your guard up. Whoever got to them may still be nearby. Well, gotta admit, you're tougher than I expected. Stay back. I may be wounded, but I'm still armed. How'd you get past my traps anyway? Just remember, I still got bullets, in case you get any funny ideas. What are you doing out here anyway? That feels a mite better. Wish I had something to give you, but I gnawed through my last sprat worst an hour ago. A cave like this makes a handy place to store goods or hide out for a spell. And the traps usually keep gawkers out. Catherine had us making drops for some big shot client out here. And before you ask, I don't know who they are. Or were. The whole point of making drops in the middle of nowhere was to keep their identity and whereabouts a secret. The Marauders knew we were coming. Rigged the bridge with explosives and everything. If they found us, my guess is they found the client too. Last I saw, they were heading back up the hill. You'll see it on the right when you get out of here. If you've got the sand to go after him, I'm sure Catherine can reward you for your trouble. Me? I'm headed back to Fallbrook just as soon as I've caught my breath. Don't wait on me. I'll head back to Fallbrook in a spell.
I don't mean to judge, but are you ever sober, Ms. Ramnareem Wentworth? Only when I got a job to do. And even that ain't a guarantee. Thank you, again, for retrieving the bolt. It's every bit as complex as I'd heard, but I'm up to the challenge. Anyway, what can I do for you? Excellent timing on your part. I worked my fingers to nubs, but I've finally completed the Bolt 52 form. I dare say it will be my second greatest achievement after the Reformations. You're getting ahead of yourself again. So I am. Do you have this cartridge? I'm working on a plan to reorganize the board. Slowly, peacefully, and with meticulous documentation. You... you are? You... that... You could do a lot of good around here, you know. Don't go getting my hopes up. But that's entirely the point. We've got to hope. We have got to partake once more of the full resources and opportunities of Halcyon. What about the folks out in the wilderness? Amber Heights, Fallbrook. Will you share with them, or will you hoard those resources here? My sincerest hope is for MSI to become a model for all of Halcyon. But we must start somewhere. But truly, I am getting ahead of myself. First, I need to submit the Bolt 52. With that data you're holding, of course. I knew there was something going on. This is exactly the proof we need. The board will have to welcome us back now. I'll transmit this data along with the completed Bolt 52 right away. After that, we'll sit back and quietly wait for the board to respond. That means no more broadcasts from us. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on Catherine herself. Still, it's good to know what happened to him and that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? This is the simple truth. We are all molecular machines. Oh, Captain, you did it! My little boy is back safe and sound! Tell the Captain how grateful we are, Tuck Tuck. Mama, I told you that I'm not staying. I just came back to talk to you about why I left. Then I'm going back to Amber Heights. Oh, we'll get that silliness sorted out. You're safe here with me, and that's how it's going to stay. Isn't that right? What a sour thing to say. My little boy will always need me. I'm his mama, you know. Mama, what I need is for you to listen to what I want for once. But that's between us. Now you promised the captain a reward, so settle up. Then you and me are gonna have a long talk. Here, kind stranger. This is every bit I've scrimped and scraped for years to save. But it's more than worth it to have my Tuck Tuck home safe again.
Remember, your needs have been provided for.
searching for illegal activity detected. What's that? And just what do you figure you're doing up here? These are my private quarters, friend. I don't allow tours up here. I don't allow tours ever on deeper consideration. Certain things require a mess to do well. See, I was just killing some time. I prefer to prepare my dinner by my own hand. Nothing like Fresh and bloody, borst worst. I do own a factory known for specializing in the canning of borst worst. On occasion, I like to imbibe other parts of the sisty pig. Did you fancy me a cannibal? Perish the thought. No, I don't eat the bodies, I disappear. A joke that last was. So, what can I do for you? My full attention is at your disposal. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't vex this guy, but if you do, it's been nice knowing you. While I approve of your associate's cautious nature, I still teeter on the verge of losing my patience. Let us move forward with the present proceedings. By sublight, you mean Catherine, do you not? Greedy star-crossed sow. Listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not negotiate with coveters. How about you bring me Catherine's severed head, and I will gift you a lifetime supply of Borst. You desire that I should lower myself to Catherine's level of crassness and filth? I cannot fathom how that would cotton myself. The king built this golden monopoly brick by brick from the rubble when the corpse abandoned Monarch. No, he ain't the sort to partner up, as that requires the sharing of power and profits. According to whom? No, I don't see the advantage to me. Besides, <clears throat> didn't anyone tell you? The king don't bow to demands, nor stoop to negotiations, friend. Never mind? Never I should mind? I will never you write up your dark... <clears throat> I mean... All right. Yes. Listen, friend. Piss. 
and I had hoped it might not come to this. Uh. The last of You seen Arthur today? Remind me never to get on Ms. Malin's bad side. She's fine. Well, so long as you ain't on her bad side. Then she's liable to drown you in the waterfall. Please say the Oda corpse you're wearing is Clive's. Huh. Not much boast to that declaration. Am I to take that to mean you didn't kill him? Hired more than we're successful, can tell you that. Still, this ought to compensate for your troubles. And take an aromatic. You stink like Sisty Pig. I'll presume you mean Arthur. The one you sent scurrying back like a sprat with his tail cut off? Reckon I'm happy he's alive? I'd be happier if the marauders who botched my drop were dead. Funny you don't look like Nelson Mason. Funnier still, I wasn't aware of an existing problem. That thunderhead. Can't hardly fathom how that panned out. Let me guess, it involved blood and guts and fur in places that don't merit mention. Well, you got my begrudging gratitude for cleaning the mess. Search the room. Try to figure out where he's gone. Sounds like Cheney's gone gold panning down on the river. I guess even scholars need to find ways to make ends meet in exile. What do you want? Oh, hey, Vicar Max. What are you doing on Monarch? I thought scientists ain't welcome here. Haven't you heard? Everyone's welcome here. It's a fucking worker's paradise. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Never worked a day in your miserable life. 
You're just a parasite, living off my goodwill. Well, guess what? My goodwill's exhausted, along with my temper. This is the guy who told me about the book while we were in prison. I lied about finding a scholar. But I don't care about any of that anymore. I just want to inflict massive amounts of pain on this guy. I couldn't risk you not bringing me here. It sounds like you have things to work out between you. I'll just be on my way. Now, where were we? Oh, that's right. I was about to beat you. Severely. Wait, wait, wait! I know who can translate the book for you! It's too late for that. I threw away my life chasing fairy tales. Will punishing you fix any of that? Of course not. But by law, it will make me feel a whole lot better. Okay, okay. Talk, Reggie. It was stolen from some sort of expert on philosophism. Weird hermit lady on Scylla. My father used to deliver supplies to the mining outpost there. It's true. My father collected some extra bits on the side by diverting some of the supplies to the gal. The way he told it, he thought the book looked valuable, so he took it. Couldn't find any buyers when it turned out to not only be French, but banned as well. Fine. We've got more important things to do anyway. help you? Don't think we've spoken before. I would remember. You look, um, well, I wouldn't forget what you're wearing, no. Most of the freshies spend the first day in the saloon. Fresh to Fallbrook, I mean. Me? I've been here going on three days now. I'm real friendly. Figure I've talked up everyone in town by now. But not you yet. Every day I've been here has been my lucky day. Never won so much in my whole life. Aside from a close call during my wilderness hike, it's been a grand adventure. I'm dreadful blessed that Captain Cryley hired me onto the crew. Ah, you wouldn't have heard of them. They're just a small pot of smugglers. Kept getting their spoils stolen when they went to fence them. So they hired on a merc. They didn't mind my being so talkative or them being my first protection gig. Captain Cryley, he does ask me to shut it sometimes, in fact, I probably shouldn't be flapping my gums about his crew at all. Look for the horns and you can't miss it. Even I saw them when we flew overhead. Massive curved stone peaks if you want to get technical. They're a part of the mountain terrain. Captain warned us to take care around Devil's Peak. The bigger beasties tend to roam the slopes there. Mid-morning, I thought I'd try Fallbrook's self-guided wilderness hike, the one that leads up around the mountain. Safe enough, else they wouldn't advertise, right? Wrong. Scarcely made it back in one piece. You can say that again. Wilderness almost got me pushing up daisies. If I wasn't so fleet-footed, I never would have escaped them raptodons, then marauders, and that manta queen alive. To outrun him, I had to ditch my bag. All the bit cards from my winnings were weighing it down. A shame, because it was my favorite gun tote. Well, Captain Crowley wanted to take a pit stop. I'm the hired security, see? They pay me to guard the cargo, but right now the hull's empty. It's my first shore leave with the crew, and my maiden voyage before that. I can tell you it's been a real hoot. Right then, very well. Can we talk? I want to thank you for talking some sense into me back there with Cheney. It has been a long time since I gave in to my violent enthusiasm. You never asked. 
Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worst idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. You're right. I owe you an apology. I've been so obsessed for so long, I couldn't see anything else. You offered me a place on your crew, friendship, and I used you to get to Cheney. And even then, you saved me from myself. I don't know if I could live with myself had I gone through with it. You owe me nothing, I know, but I... I'm begging your forgiveness. Thank you. I promise I'll be nothing but truthful from this point forward. Oh, exactly as you'd imagine. Can't say I enjoyed this stint. It did provide me with plenty of time to think. The way I see it, the universe was snapping me back to where I needed to be. You stray too far from the course of your destiny. The world will try to correct for it. Back east are safest. We can head up this path if you want to shoot your way through a few nightmares on your way up. Clear the sulfur sun fucks out so he's <laughs> Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra 2. We never heard from them again. Think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I don't rightly know what happened. I should have tried to track them down back then. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I, I stopped trying because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age.
on you. I won't. And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now. Hey you! Get over here! There are marauders up ahead! How many... Oh. How the hell did marauders navigate the cavern? This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine? That's my gun if you were wondering. We don't take kindly to marauders. Is that a trick question? Never mind. Marauders ain't smart enough to be asking those. That's good, I guess, as I wasn't looking forward to double tapping you. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. This station's plumb crawling with marauders, you know. I take it you ain't met the other C3s. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with. You want more details? You ought to talk to my crew. They're guarding a small barracks to the southeast, by the edge of the mountain. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There's a little station near the cliff. You'll find the rest of my crew there. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book. Usually. Go petition the boss man. Maybe you can convince him to alter my duties. I like the way you fight, stranger. Wish we could join you, but I got orders to stay put. Nice work. You should check in with my crew. Maybe they can help you. Go back and follow the trail. Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he's... You may not realize this being as you're an outsider, but the 
while this place is on lockdown. I guess we keep moving forward. Look for another way up. out there whoever you are yes yes i can see you come here and talk to me face to intercom i can't tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head what in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station unless you are in fact trying to suicide by marauder and you neoka what are you doing lugging a stranger into my station you could use the socialization you son of a bitch also he hired me to what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. No, no, no. We'll deal with information-related business later. As I said, there are bigger problems threatening my life and livelihood at this very moment. The Marauders want me dead. And since my hired hands have clearly turned to idle, it appears I need you to clear out the threat. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the Broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that, aside from you. You're here, and you're armed, aren't you? The feed's gone grainy, but it looks like you're packing deadly force. I know Nioka is, for sure. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently. Aside from the bits I'll be paying you, you said you wanted something from me, something information related. I'll give it to you, in person, once I'm safe.
That's the last of them, I think. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes around one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. You said that in a way that was almost believable. I take offense to that. Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose... Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant... Right. Yes, I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We're resetting a broadcast tower, not filing taxes. There are no errands, spreadsheets, or rituals involved. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Eternal no. What is wrong with you? Who would ever design something like that? However, you're welcome to brew me a Rizzo Insta Coffee from the staff kitchen on your way back. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. We're almost done. Let's finish this. Terrific. I'll be here. 
waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. He told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. What in the... Captain, there's a fireball in the sky. armaments to defend Stellar Bay, but we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do, so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I am more than finished with you lot.
a hunt. Captain, you sure know how to set a woman's heart to beating, that's for sure. when they're in the best of shape. I'll stay here as well, so keep an eye out for any potential threats. No one saw me trip over that, right? If the Iconoclasts reach that ship first, there won't be any chance for a peaceful monarch. I don't suppose you've found the targeting module yet. I've sent patrols, but they're running into trouble with the Iconoclasts. That's surprising. The board's equipment is usually in top shape. After all, they have first access to any fresh parts or components. Agreed. This is mysterious, to say the least. A conspiracy? You've spent too much time around Graham. Well, because the module controls the weapons systems. 
because once we mount them on Stellar Bay's walls, no Marauder or Raptodon will ever be a threat to us again. Stellar Bay will be as secure as any other settlement in Halcyon. The board's own Salvage and Recovery Clause 32B would say differently. And they won't dare challenge us over this. Not after the data you found on their experiments here. Don't worry. We'll send an engineering team for those later. We'll have to disconnect them from the rest of the ship. Of course, they'll be useless without that targeting module, which is why it's critical that you retrieve it. Well, surely you don't mean that. I thought we were in this together, like a team. I'm the dashing mastermind with a head for numbers, and you're my roguish sidekick who always gets the job done. And you're just a little bit smitten with me, but won't admit it. The point is, this weapon system would be a powerful advantage, and we can't risk the Iconoclast getting it. Can you imagine what those maniacs would do with weapons like that? They'd wreak havoc. And roll back all the progress we've made at reconciling with the rest of Halcyon. Oh, I've known their ilk long enough. Even if they merely sat on the scraps, the threat of a bunch of anarchists holding a gunship would bring the full wrath of the board down on Monarch. We can't afford that. Threaten the system's order and you call down the wrath of the universe. Or in this case, the boards. Which in this colony is pretty much the same thing. Ah, you see our quandary then. Good, because we haven't a moment to lose. They're all mad! And what's more, they left us! I don't see any way for us to work together. Oh, not this again. Remember what we practiced, sir. Yes. The words in those reviews were very hurtful, but they do not define me. I am a mantipiller, and my will is my cocoon. I can emerge and become whatever I wish. I hadn't thought of it that way. Perhaps you have a point. Supposing you're right, who exactly would you have me work with? The Iconoclasts are not the most compromising sorts. That's an interesting suggestion. I confess I don't know much about her except that she worked for Rizzo. There ain't a body on this planet that can keep a group patched up like she has. I don't know how she does it. I'd be willing to consider it. But I need to see her review first. One can't be haphazard about these things. Besides, if you think her skills will complement mine, then we should see what those skills are. Excellent. Her review would be in the Rizzo offices in Cascadia. Bring it to me, and I'll see if she's qualified.
like a good tussle. Got a ship out there? Looks fairly well banged up.
that nobody set foot in here since Cascadia fell. Proximity alert. Biology human. Protocol kill all plants. Suspended. Present your Rizzo identification credentials or prepare to be downsized. Attempting to disengage security protocols without proper authorization is a fireable offense. Priming weapons. Executive level password accepted. As identification according to employee ID protocol A-3501. Welcome back, doctor. Be advised. Mantasaur threat level is petrifying purple berry. Please use caution. Mantasaur wounds are not covered under Rizzo's health policy. Have a productive day.
Cap, we can use this ventilation system to solve our bug problem. Gloriously showering prey in high-velocity shells is quite thrilling, I'll admit. But it ain't cheap. It stains my spirit to say it, but this here is a more economical option. Manosaurs need an oxygen-rich environment, more than we do. We drop the oxygen levels a bit, we can suffocate them. Here, see? Done. Won't be but a minute before they're all rolling around, desperately trying to figure out why they're dying and why they can't stop it. Don't I know it. They're expensive prey. Down they go! Machinery is making me a mite nervous. If only they were always this easy to kill. This is the part where I take over, Captain. Do not fret. I've been cracking systems like these for years. <laughs> I do so love when you jest with me. I will take that as an intended distraction from the stress of all that could go terribly and excruciatingly wrong should I fail. Aha! Got it. Easy as mock apple pie. You can say that again. Except for the last part. Do not call me that. On pain of death. Huh. <laughs> I'd like to see you try and stop me.
I have received a transmission from Roseway from a Dr. Shaw. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. Have either of the assault cruisers ever... Rizzo's mock apple cider. That gas is going to make us a fucking mint. 120-some cubic meters of it, at a million bits a pop. Take this, you've earned it. When we get buyers lined up, I'm gonna buy a gold toilet to shit in. You're goddamn right. Monarch isn't exactly a walk down the lanes of Byzantium. But here you are with all your limbs attached. Call me impressed, contractor. No one you saw, anyway. Glad to see you're looking out for yourself. You've been keeping busy. I hear you took on some extra work at Fallbrook. Catherine sounds pleased as a pig in shit over cornering the Borst markets. Hey, when you were at the slaughterhouse, those swine didn't give you any... strange looks, did they? I knew it. I'm probably getting worked up over nothing. Just try not to think about pigs. You never know, you know? I've got a lot on my mind, but it's nothing that concerns you. At least, not yet. I have another job lined up, assuming you're still interested in work. You're gonna salvage me a space station. Heliospheric Research Station 1084, to be exact. I want it. Cobwebs and all. Interested? Looking to expand, huh? Fallbrook ain't big enough for you? This opportunity won't come around again, Captain. Not this time. The board tolerates our business up to a point, and selling off a station full of their old gear and terminals crosses that point. But if we were to move in and commandeer the station as a sublight salvage remote office, that's a different matter. Legally gray by comparison. More of a squatter situation. Right now it's only salvage on paper. Systems and comms have gone dark. Poke around if you're curious why. While the board lets 1084 gather dust, you're gonna swoop in and plant sublight's flag. Perfectly legit, perfectly legal. Here, this override bypass should get you into the station systems where you can plant my flag. And one last thing. When you get there, make sure you aren't followed. We wouldn't want that. Glad we understand each other. I'm on the heels of something big. Play your cards right and I'll clue you in, but right now, I'm not sure who I can trust. Just be careful. Someone might try and use you to get to me.
now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw, beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast. Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short, lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn, engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. See you soon, Captain. Wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! I smell blood! Take a gander. The door's busted. Rebecca? Anders? You in there? Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? This is an unfortunate sight indeed. My condolences. They were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! <gasps> I'd leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... At least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think I'm glad. If she were still alive now, it'd break her to know the truth. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. Pfft, that'd be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. 
Never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does. Destination reached. Scylla. Hey, we gotta talk about this. Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? <laughs> you got the wrong idea, boss. It ain't like that. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Getting close to the hermit. I can feel it.
Here they come. What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. Not much, but you are free to take whatever you wish. Please, leave me a few morsels of food, though. I may not eat a lot, but I still do need to eat. We are not here to rob you. I've brought this book for you to translate for me. We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry. And the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I have spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart, or the unprepared. A crass way to put it, but yes. Chemicals that can expand or destroy the participant's consciousness. Either hallucinations followed by unconsciousness and a headache, or raving insanity, which can be fun in its own way. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. Well, shit. We've come this far. If we die, at least we'll die hearing colors and seeing sound. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. Mouth. 
we are obviously the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated. Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out, always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place, never looking inside himself. What in the void do you expect him to find inside himself? It's just blood and squishy bits and... Oh no. If I vomit on you, I want you to know I ain't sorry. And platitudes from a figment... Figment? Of my imagination, no less. Who said I wasn't a figment of your mind? But you know the truth. You don't need someone else to tell you. You've always known it. Everyone knows it. They just won't see it. We're overwhelmed with stories from our earliest days. The stories others sell us, and the stories we tell ourselves. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives. But they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. I could tell you all manner of stories. If I weren't... Oh, I'm sticking to, to alcohol from now on. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I just wanted to prove to my parents that I... That... I, damn it. You're right. Max, you need to lay the past to rest. What happened with your father and I, it's long dead. To attain your goals, you must live in the chaos. Be fine with the chaos. Whether you resist or not, it will take you wherever it wants. More assuredly than even the fictional architects plan to sleep away to prove. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... It's... It's just a farce, right? Just... Just my own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined. Controlled. I have no doubts. And I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? What are you talking about? I can do that. You'll be careful then. <laughs> I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. I... woke up. The illusions I built for myself just fell away. I'm no longer interpreting, I'm... experiencing. Everything... is perfect. In a way. Perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. 
I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality, clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I have finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. So, have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. It looks like you learned something in there as well. Of course you were. That queen ain't gonna go down easy. I can't wait. What's up? Outstanding. These ought to be enough. Let's get back to Monarch. There's an old base I used to call home. I can get us in the door, but we'll have to shoot our way through the queen's brood to get to the center. We'll set the bait there. Password to the door is Charon. Hayes' idea. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, Nioka. Charon. He said it was some old myth, something about death and all the things we killed. Rest of us just thought it sounded cool, so here we are. Fucking right we are. It's an old cave system we tried to turn into an encampment. You'll see when we get there. HRS-1084, Captain. It's emitting a very weak docking signal. I almost mislabeled it as normal etheric static. Nothing but the void here, Captain. I just assume leave the cold, dark, and derelict.
Uh, we ought to keep an eye on these autos. If we poke around too much, they might wake up. Captain, I've been attempting to contact you with urgent news. However, communicational functionality was impaired due to the power outage. A UDL vessel has been tracking our position and just recently docked with the station. They are patching into the station's transmission lines now. I cannot stop... I've been waiting for this day since we tagged your ship in Cascadia, Captain. So glad we finally have this opportunity. My ship is docked with 1084. There's no escape. You've been poking your nose into restricted locations. This makes my superiors unhappy. I could peel your ship open like a can of forest. But I'm in a sporting mood. I didn't say that. How did you gain access to that system? Stop it at once! <gasps> did you... Did you hit it yet? What's happening in there? I don't know who you are, but I have nothing to gain by risking my hide against a lunatic. Commander out. The UDL gunship is undocking from the station. They appear to be departing into space. Damn. I ought to try talking more and fighting less. Seems like it saves on ammunition. <laughs> that ain't no fun. Keep a sharp eye out, Captain. One wrong step could incapacitate or kill.
Sublight will be well pleased that you have claimed the station for them. Myself? I'll be fine leaving this place. Chartrand. Sounds awfully familiar. That was the scientist from Cascadia, right? I wish to offer my commendations for convincing the UDL's gunship to leave HRS-1084. I did not favor the idea of being stripped and sold for parts. Hey you, looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on me.
Nothing to do but stand around and watch the stars. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the Groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man? Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. Felix will always have a place in this crew. He's family to us now. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm afraid I have not made myself clear. Felix may have served you with childlike aplomb, but the day will come when he puts away childish things and serves a higher cause. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy, that one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. We're not a band of common pirates, Captain. We are revolutionaries. I expect a certain degree of intestinal fortitude from my soldiers. Trask was a coward. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant. Has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own in tuck tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the Groundbreaker, last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything, and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. 
When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. That was simultaneously the least scientific and most pompous statement I've heard in ages. Well done, Mr. Harlow. A vicar? I admit, I never imagined a man of the cloth living the adventurer's life. You do keep some interesting company. Was there anything else? Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay. Something on your mind? Let's. I was working on this plan for years, saving every bit I could, drawing plans, biding my time. I never intended to spend my life laboring on the groundbreaker. When the opportunity presented itself, I did what I had to do. I left. You might have said something. I had some ugly business in Scylla. If I told you, I would have implicated you. Hephaestus controlled mining operations all over Scylla. Most of these operations failed. The company pulled out and abandoned their facilities. Mostly abandoned anyway. This one was running on a skeleton crew. My associates and I seized control in a matter of minutes. Approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Hey, that pad down. You mind trying to have a moment here? Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Contempt for Boundaries. Could you do me a favor and get spaced? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You're telling me you're on a first-name basis with Ms. Tennyson? All right. I'm gonna take your word for it. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Not inclined to answer your questions. Not after the way you talk to me. Yeah, all right. What else did you need? That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. He must have been recruiting gathering up his band of revolutionaries. 
Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with the fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Brufus. Appreciate it. No offense meant, just been a long day is all. Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I heard about that. While my lawyers scratch their heads wondering how we deal with human salvage, I'm leaving the researchers in hibernation. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. You might have figured that out already. That's right. Up until now, I've kept you in the dark for your protection, and more importantly, mine. But I'd like to think we've earned each other's trust. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. I didn't like the picture. Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big. Something none of us were meant to know. I'm thinking more along the lines of the sapient species paradox. Oh, I read about that in one of my magazines. She's talking about aliens, right? Ask yourself why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. Wrong. I think it's about intelligent life discovering us. Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084. And who knows what else? We have to put a stop to it. I knew it. Aliens from other worlds been visiting Halcyon. At least one of your crew can keep an open mind. But this isn't some Aetherwave serial, Millstone. This is reality. Hear me out. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. Captain, in my humble assessment, Miss Hagen is insane. Damn, she's serious. Tragic, ain't it? What age does to your mental faculties? The crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Conspiracy. One carried out with the help of human collaborators, assuming they haven't all been replaced. This is an invasion of our very cells. That damned gas is mixing our nuclein with Halcyon biology to twist us, change us, make us more like those monsters on Monarch. Terrific. That go-getter initiative will carry you far in sublight. Sharing my findings took a calculated risk. If you were a spy, I doubt you'd even realize it. Only your cells would know. 
Tobias, get my knife. The big one. That was a joke. Ha ha. We each get one. Now, back to business. If you don't believe me, go pay a visit to the puppet master who's working against her own kind. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. She's a research scientist and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in cysty pig juiciness. Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. It's cute that you'd think that about me. I just want to add savior of humanity to my resume. I've got ambitions outside of this office, you know. Besides, this way Sublight gets first dibs on alien salvage. Do you usually come across innocent people trapped in suspension tanks? Because some of us would call that excessive. Remember, the tanks were just the shit she left behind. Just imagine the experiments she carted off to her next lab. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep. This keycard will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartrand says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. Right. You just stumbled into a camp full of armed strangers because you wanted directions. How much is Harlow paying you? A favor, huh? Let me guess. 
He promised you some reward in the brave new world that was to come. Said he'd make you his lieutenant if you crossed me off. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Arlo wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. How do I know that I can trust you? Yeah, guess that's a fair point. Listen, I don't know what lies Harlow's dripped down your ear, but you'd be a fool to trust him. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All the palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You're a real piece of work, Trask. Not just a turncoat, but a liar, too. Go piss up a rope, kid. I've got nothing to prove to you. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another bored asset. A two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. What was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. Huh. You ain't like other board agents I heard about. You got a functioning spine. You want to confront Harlow yourself? Be my guest. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Because he's for sale. Anything the board can buy, the board will buy. And that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard. And he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. Board sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself. Gather up the captives on his own ship, vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Take it, you've made up your mind. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. <sighs> Here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude. Got my sights on you. That machine stole my the word. So it is. Thus ends Rufus Trask. Once a sensible man, by and by a fool, presently a corpse. I hope you never have to discover what it is like, Captain. The relief one feels when a mutiny comes to an end. The Trask had some things to say about you, and I've got my own misgivings. That's a damning accusation. 
Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a liar to my face. How should I know? But what the hell do I care? Trask was a traitor. I didn't ask you to understand his motives. I asked you to cross him off. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. Hit the bus! <laughs>
Lillian. Vicar. Vicky. Yes. Aw, this is no fun anymore. This is... this is definitely not how I imagined it'd end. The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. No. I guess you really don't. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh... This is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get over that. I hope so. I don't see this one passing anytime soon. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. Part of me wishes we'd put Trask in the ground. But you know, I think that's just my frustration talking. Thanks for your time, boss. We're now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. What was it like in Edgewater? I hear you workers were on the clock every available moment. We always got eight hours a day for sleeping. Just not always consecutive. My condolences. I appreciate consistent wages like any other sane person, but that still sounds awful. At least Sanjar gives his folks weekends.
Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel, hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Here they come! These were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd... I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. Huh. That's... That ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks. Something on your mind, Captain? Too bad. Had I a reliable third party I could trust to set up a meet, maybe I'd consider it. With all the help you've done here, at first I thought it could have been you. But I can't trust you to think logically. Your priorities are skewed a bit too much like Graham's. 
for all I know, Sanjar's playing you to get to us and you can't see it. So no, in another life, maybe that could have worked out for all of us. In this one, we're going to war. You ever been off Monarch, Mioka? Before you met the captain, I mean. Nah, I mostly just drank and hunted. Any luck bringing the Iconoclast to the bargaining table? I don't like the idea that they'll be trying for that module while we delay. Excellent! At last, we have what we need. I wouldn't get excited just yet, sir. It looks like the Iconoclasts followed you. I have word they're gathering in the ruins outside of town. I'm afraid we've got to fight them. They'd knock our walls down trying to get that module. It looks like this means... war. Ooh, I just got goosebumps! You really know how to sell that, don't you? Maybe you could, uh, teach me how you do that. Sir, I doubt this is the time. Right. I'll lock the south gate to keep them out. You'll have to approach from the north. Good luck.
think of the unreliable Parvati. There's always something to fix, and it's neat working in the Aether. I always took Atmo for granted. Now, if I drill through the hole, we all suffocate. Excited, you know. You're back. <laughs> and in one piece. <laughs> Does this mean you, I, I mean we, won? We did indeed, sir. I can't believe it. Not that I'm really surprised, but, well, maybe a little. You did it. I mean, we did it. Of course. I don't mean to undercut everything you've done for us. Shall I make a note for your self-review? Give credit more generously? Not now, Celia. Between our reinstatement on the board and the gain of this ship, we'll usher in a new age of prosperity for the people of Monarch. That's a hefty promise. You've got Monarch's hopes up, Sanjar. Don't go messing this up like our last overlords did. And perhaps in time, I can use my position on the board to turn things around for the rest of Halcyon. You really mean that? That's the nicest. Celia, put that down in today's minutes. Already done, sir. Anyhow, thank you. And good luck to you. What can I do for you? Captain, I hope you made the right decision by siding with MSI. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? this work? Oh, damn it! Blast! That's loud! I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mine the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Hiram 
Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist. Hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting. Aloysius Clark, Minister of Earth. Virtually every colony requires the presence of a Minister of Earth. Clark is complicit in every one of the board's crimes. Whenever the board issues some new decree, you'll find Clark's signature on the dotted line. If I had time in several blackboards, I could explain the details to you, but to put it briefly, dimethyl sulfoxide is the reason you're alive today. The chemical is absolutely essential to reviving the Hope's colonists. I need you to steal as much as you possibly can. The more, the better. If you don't bring me enough chemicals, I might not be able to save the Hope's colonists. And then nothing will stop the board from destroying this colony. Oh, I understand it must seem impossible to you. Infiltrate Byzantium, the crown jewel of the colony. Steal a batch of rare chemicals from a heavily guarded estate. In order to do the impossible, you must first divide it into a series of smaller, less impossible tasks. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Absolutely. Let's talk. No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Nice to meet you, Dr. Wells. I'm Parvati Holcomb. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, very well. I can be a little cantankerous when I haven't had my caffeinoids. You have my apologies and so forth. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew, such as they are. You're a natural leader, after all. Law knows Halcyon's in need of real leaders. Yes, indeed. Well done. Also, you still haven't spontaneously liquefied, which pleases me immensely. Progress. What's on your mind?
I understand we have decided to continue supporting the outlaw scientist, Dr. Phineas Wells. Captain, I'm receiving an urgent docking request from another vessel. Greetings from the Halcyon Parcel Service. Delivery is guaranteed within standard margins of certainty. I've got a special delivery for Alex Hawthorne of The Unreliable. Uh, with your permission, I'll see it transferred to your ship. It's a parcel, sir. A parcel is a shipment wrapped and prepared for delivery, sir. Opening a customer's parcel is strictly against regulations. HPS's no peaking policy guarantees that your deliveries remain confidential and HPS remains free of any liability. I am contractually obligated to deliver my cargo to the captain of the unreliable under pain of fines, imprisonment, and censure by my superiors. That's the HPS difference for you. Service with civility. Stand by, Captain Hawthorne. An HPS certified distribution technician has deposited the parcel into your cargo hold in accordance with hazardous waste disposal procedures. Scheduling a re-delivery will require Form 232B Addendum 57G and approximately 16 weeks of processing time. Unfortunately, we are currently experiencing a critical shortage of blank forms. Thank you for your patience, and please remember HPS for all of your future parcel-related needs. I've done plenty of smuggling work, but the big thing with the chemicals is bold. Do you mind? I'm meeting someone. I... oh! Oh! You mean I'm supposed to be meeting you? Nothing, it's just... I thought you'd be taller. Anyway, let's not get hung up on that. The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah, that's my codename for... You know our mutual friend. Oh, I'm Golden Eagle. Um, yeah, I named you Cuckoo. That doesn't even make... Fine. Fine. This cloak and dagger stuff is nonsense, but if everyone else gets a code name, I want one too. You can be Cassowary. That's... 
shockingly apt. Cassowaries were a solitary bunch. But once they had a friend, they'd stick with them till the end. Aggressive little creatures, too. Anyway, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate, which is heavily guarded. I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. All of them trying to eat you, I'd wager. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Sure, that part is. That's why they install shredders in those boxes, after all. But one day the shredder broke. No one came to fix it. And since it wasn't working, we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints. So you can imagine how messy things got. At first, management put up an out of order sign, but that just seemed to worry people. Like they were advertising something wasn't working. Why would the Golden City need suggestions for improvement? It's really so people can feel heard. Everyone's got something to complain about, you know? They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Except that's not how they go. At least that's not how they're supposed to go in Byzantium. If things are broken here, of all places, then I'm starting to think there ain't a hope left in this colony. Things have kept on running this long, right? Or so I used to think. The whole episode made me wonder. If they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really. Whoa, I'm not one of your B&E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Ha ha. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's House of Inebriation between shifts. House of Inebriation? Count me the hell in! Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home, and his guards never leave him. Good hunting, Golden Eagle. Are you still tinkering with that? It's not gonna fix itself. Don't we have repair drones?
Nothing exciting ever happens around here. Move along. Something happen around here for once. Leaves and feeling fresh and glowing. Do not operate heavy machinery for two hours after application. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be famous? Kid, you got presence. Natural magnetism. Know what I mean? Tell you what, you're going to like it a whole lot more once we start talking bits. Listen, uh, you got an agent? Some kind of representation? Fresh natural talent. I know it when I see it. Listen, you got a real special quality. Raw energy. I see you in pictures, kid. I'm making a feature. Space Pirates of Moros Prime. It's gonna be a hit. But we still need a star. And I think you got the chops. Hey, if you want an action story, you ought to haul a couple of cameras to Monarch sometime. We'll give you some damn good footage. If you survive. Unscripted chaos. Come on, who'll pay to see that? Audiences want heroes and villains just like the one standing in front of me. So what do you say? You ready for the chance of a lifetime? Terrific. We're holding auditions at the studio. Head to Odeon Pictures and take the elevator. You're going all the way to the top, baby. The dissidents actually took over the refinery. I can't believe it! And then, the chairman shot their space shuttle down with a hammer. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. CNT near Maple Syrup. It's near this complete vessel. Looking for weapons? You've come to the right place. Every Byzantine needs high-quality armaments, and you won't find better anywhere else. Why? To defend their property, of course. Byzantium is the best of what Halcyon has to offer. It's up to us to protect it. Marauders, dissidents, especially large sprats. One never knows what threat might arise. Oh, please. From what I've seen of this city, a rusty nail is the most hazardous peril you've ever suffered. The point is to be adequately prepared, and good preparation is a powerful deterrent. Only because we make it so. It is only the fear of the well-armed Byzantine that keeps the rabble at bay. I can honestly say I'm personally terrified at the thought of someone such as yourself wielding a high-powered weapon. Indeed. It's up to us to take our safety into our own capable hands. Indeed. Now, what are you in the market for, my fine friend?
The Emerald Vale plant is back to full production. There's something to be thankful for. Stand back, you. I'm part of Minister Clark's personal detail, and that means you gotta keep five feet back at all times. Yep, you're looking at the minister's newest personal guard <laughs> right here. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. Oh, um, he's, uh, medium height with, like, medium colored hair and, like, a kind of a medium face. Just like in his posters. Everyone tells me he's very private, okay? Besides, I just started. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL assist issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. That's right. Not just anyone is allowed to have a key to Minister Clark's residence. It's all so very high level. That's a great idea! I'll have a Spectrum Vodka. Oh, maybe they got some at the bar. Have you tried our new cocktail sponsored by Rizzo's? One part purple spectrum vodka, one part artificial tomato-like substitute juice. We call it a Blue Bloody Mary. Oh, by all means. Rizzo's spectrum vodka is about to release its newest color, ultraviolet, completely invisible to the naked eye. What can I? Then you'll want to speak with our auto mechanical inebriation assistant, located just over there. Quite so, but I would never lower myself to do something as gauche as tending bar. My auto mechanical assistant does all the work for me. Please allow me to improve your drinking experience with fine cocktails and pre-approved banter. Request confirmed. Banter protocol activated. Welcome, attractive patron, to Billingsley's House of Inebriation. Did you know that I am a priceless heirloom, custom built for the Billingsley family? Please remember to thank Mr. Billingsley for allowing you to bask in my presence. Hey, you look familiar. Have we met before? Here's to me! <laughs> hey, you are really great. Have I told you that? We should be friends. <laughs> wow, listen to me. I'm soaked. <laughs> I should probably slow down before I'm face down on the tile somewhere. Ah, who am I kidding? I could, I could have another. You got another? It's not every day you get your dream job, right? Wow, you've got like this crazy...
crazy energy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're like a, a manosaur. You got a manosaur energy. Oh, laws. I gotta stop. I'm seeing at least two of you. Only two? You've got a ways to go. Have you always been here? I didn't see you a minute ago. I really shouldn't. I'll have the worst hangover tomorrow if I don't stop. You know, that's a very good point. Yeah. Was that one supposed to taste like purple berry crunch? Or am I just tasting breakfast? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. I just need to sit down. Ah! Today's trends are tomorrow's trash. Citizens, today marks a monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. So what if all those MSIs somewhere? After a deep and thorough examination of our budgets, revenue streams, and predictive models, we are publishing our yearly success report. If they sent money to Monarch instead of building even one of those homes, I bet we could have rebuilt Stellar Bay. The whole damn thing. This property is off limits. Solicitors, loiterers, and uninvited visitors will be fined to the fullest extent of company policy. This ultimatum brought to you by Universal Defense Logistics. Well, that's funny. The minister isn't expecting visitors, and you don't much look like one of those couriers from HPS. Minister Clark's a private man, and you're asking too many questions. I'm on my legally allotted break. Really, I'm supposed to be here. Oh, um, what are you doing here? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Uh, does it, does it look like I'm up to something? Laws, I knew it! Uh, you got me. I'm caught, aren't I? I work in the lab at the Ministry of Accuracy and Morale. Some of my sprats went missing, but it's not my fault, okay? Maybe I let them out more often than regulations allow, but they need to stretch their little legs. And so what if I occasionally forgot to latch their cage? Everyone gets a little distracted now and then. They escaped, and before I could coax them back, they'd made their way to the maintenance tunnels. Even if I did dare go down there, they're among all the common sewer sprats and exterminator mechanicals. Really? In that case, take this collection crate. Six of my little ones are down there, but don't worry, you can easily tell them apart from common sewer sprats. They have intelligent eyes, an agreeable yet reserved demeanor, and a fondness for hiding. Also, they're white rather than green. Please, do take care, and do mind the exterminator mechanicals. If the worst should happen to my little darlings, well, I still want their bodies. For science, of course. Well, to maintain things, of course, like big humming machine things with gears. And pipes, water pipes, air pipes, all sorts of pipes. That's why they connect the city from the Acropolis district to here. Something else? I still am. After all, I'm a person of very little influence and only middling prospects. No one does favors for free. But I must say, I'm far too distressed to think critically about your suspiciously kind offer.
Move along. Hey. I'm afraid I can't help you at the moment. Have a prosperous day. Well, you're getting an early start on the day's parcels, aren't you? Welcome to Halcyon Parcel Service. Deliveries guaranteed within standard margins of accuracy. We do, in fact, have a parcel here for a Mr. Clark, comma, Minister. You're not an official member of the Halcyon Parcel Service team. That means you'll have to sign a release form. Oh, I'd have to submit a request for a release form, and then wait for a receipt for my request of a release form. Then you'd have to make an appointment. Couldn't say. We've got a backlog and I'm planning on retiring in the next 35 years, but I could give my successor a memo on your behalf. You're welcome to lodge a complaint in our suggestion box. Actually, no. We're still waiting on our delivery of a new suggestion box. You do that? Wow. Hey, you know, a positive review from the minister would go a long way in my semi-monthly employment audit. Here's your parcel to be delivered to Mr. Clark, comma, minister. Law speed. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Great setting.
this disrespect. Covering you. I was rooting for the spread. What? It's cute, and all the mechanicals are assholes. Any luck finding my sprats? Truly? Why, this is marvelous! And all safe and sound. Oh, Reginald, Philippa, Vonda, Haroon, Iskander, Evelyn, I'm never letting you out of my sight again. Please, take this. It's not much, but it's the best I can offer for the safe return of my darlings. Now, I've got to get back to the lab before my supervisor logs my absence. with it, you wretched contraption! Does nothing! For our audition, please use the elevator on the left. Considering it, aren't you? Great! You made it! Listen, I know you're expecting a script, but you're the real deal. Just go in there and do what feels natural. No, 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 don't question yourself. Just feel the scene and go with it. I got a feeling you'll know what to do. We gave the other actors real weapons to keep things authentic. And cause Josh is paying to see their logo on the big screen. See, I knew you'd get it. Now go in there, find your mark, and show us what you got. Well, well. Here to stop us at last, Captain Steel? You're too late. All of this Settlement CNP Hungry Time food pills, same nutritional value, but now with added filler, are ours. 
With their patented stomach stuffing effects and baseline vitamin content, we will be nigh unstoppable. They... they are? What an unexpected twist! You may have fooled me for now, but not for long. Which side is my good side? Do you remember the last time we faced each other? The Battle of Axajax, staring one another down across the void of space while flaming debris fell like rain around us. Hey, I didn't write this. Just go with it. I had you surrounded and outgunned, but you overcame my superior numbers with tactical thinking and a Hammersmith limited edition grenade launcher. I've been waiting for five years now, and at last my day for vengeance has come! I... oh... I just got chills! But still, you'll not stop me now! This what passes for entertainment around here? They ought to try tossing back a Spectrum Red and going rapt hunting. Someone's bound to lose an eye. It'll be a riot. Hey, no one told me we were giving critics an early look. I gotta focus, okay? I have this whole port wired with some micro energon transistors. Once we're away, I'll activate the gamma particulate field and the quantiponic chain reaction will turn this whole place into vaporized plasma. Speechless, I see. It is a flawless plan. I hope you've paid your burial fees and signed your personal death and dismemberment waivers because this is the end for you. You're not even taking this seriously. I refuse to work like this. I've done Aetherwave spots for Wentworth, I'll have you know. To the break room, everyone. I need my Moab fizzy tea. Cut, cut. That was fantastic. With actors like you, who needs writers? Take five. That was brilliant stuff. Do you write your own material? Amazing. Just firm up that jawline, and you'll be a triple threat. I'm gonna have to fire the writing staff. What do those anemic fuckwits know about dialogue, anyway? I'm thinking a whole new script. More pirates, bigger explosions, you flicking a stogie slim into a barrel of gasoline. Marketing says that kind of action sells tickets. Here, this is for your work today. I'll be in touch once we get that script. Maybe we need more guns. Bigger guns, with more plating. Marketing will love that. All right, how does this sound? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to walk into you like that. Oh. I'm afraid I can't come down anymore. You must be... Oh, there. That's one right there. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of him? How splendid. Another rung leech wandering through the streets of Byzantium. Why, just this morning, I thought to myself, as lovely as the gardens are, what they really need is more greasy vagrants frolicking through them. And here you are, frolicking.
Well, you should bottle it and sell it to Auntie Cleo's. I'm sure it would make an excellent repellent. Honestly, what is the board thinking letting so many of your ilk into the city proper? It's madness. I earned my place here, just like everyone else. My grandfather was the CIO at Tile, you see. Chief Idea Officer. He came up with all the best ideas for their products. You know the font they use for Stogie Slims? That was him. Well, he described the idea of it to their font development team, then picked it from a list of choices, but that's basically the same thing. It was a very long list. Let's see. He picked the colors they included in rainbow chips. No one else wanted purple, but he insisted. Everyone loves the purple ones. And you know how the Cosmic Smokes logo has an eye in the middle of a heptagon? He said that one came to him in a dream. He was a true visionary, so far ahead of his time. I just told you, my grandfather made millions of bits as CIO, and I earned them from him. Of course it is. Wealth is the most visible, objective measure of success. And success isn't given to you, it's earned. My grandfather taught me that. If you have wealth, you're successful, and if you're successful, you must have earned it. Honestly, it's a simple concept. You're welcome. Now, do we have any further business, or are you just here for the repartee? What's wrong? It erodes the very pillars of our society. Merit, decorum, personal hygiene. This city is meant for us, the system's finest. We earned its luxuries. But now we are overrun with the unworthy and the ungrateful, and this early retirement nonsense is making it even worse. The worst thing to happen to Halcyon. A contest that gives even the lowliest and most inefficient workers a chance to live in Byzantium. By simply winning a lottery, those early retirees get an exclusive district of Byzantium to themselves. No one else is even allowed to go there. Tell me, how is that fair? Oh, by the law. I mean the principle of it, not the mechanics. It's not right. I deserve to see any district I please. Why, if it weren't guarded, I'd... Hmm. You know, you look like you've been shot at before. What say I hire you to investigate this travesty, and you get paid to do so? Oh, we get paid this time. I like this plan. Yes. Listen to your... Your... What is that person's job, exactly? Are they your secretary? Personal masseuse? Or do you just keep them around as a mobile armrest? Well, it doesn't matter. What's important is that you think this is a fabulous arrangement, and you'd be thrilled to lend me your services. Aren't you? Fantastic! Consider yourself employed, Vagrant. I hear the chosen retirees all enter the retirement district via the port landing pad, but it's completely locked down. You'd never get in that way. Unless, of course, you had a wealthy, beautiful benefactor of impeccable social pedigree. Which you do. How fortunate for you. These codes will get you past the lockdown. Oh, and don't worry about subtlety. I don't care how you deal with security, just correct this injustice at all costs. The same way anyone gets anything here, of course. I made friends with the right people. Bits might earn you a place in Byzantium. But that means everyone here has little need for more of them. For favors like this, you need to spend... Let's call it social capital. That's the last of them. Finally. Is it just me, or are we getting more and more retired recently? Not just you. Felt like a damn factory worker these last few months. Oh well. Nothing of you. Welcome. 
to the Halcyon Holdings Corporation Early Retirement Center. You, the lucky few, have been selected to spend the rest of your days living the high life in your own private district in Byzantium. When you arrive, you'll be whisked away to your very own luxury penthouse, furnished exclusively. Some assembly required. 24-7 furniture is not responsible for any injury, psychological damage, or divorce litigations that occur during the assembly process. After you get settled in, you'll have the chance to explore your new home. I've mentioned too many marauder ambushes in my life to die by a trap built by corporate pencil pushers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll sue every technician and employee. Oh, there. That's one right there. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of him? I must admit, I'm getting a certain thrill out of our little arrangement. If this goes well, perhaps I'll start hiring wandering delinquents to handle all of my affairs. It is going well, I hope. I knew it. I just knew it. What a disaster. Did you get a good look around? What was it like? Toothbrushes? Why, that is positively gaudy. I must have one. I can't believe they kept this from us. From me. The nerve. The audacity. Here, take your payment. I have to fetch my things. I don't care what I have to do. They'll give me luxury or give me death. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. There's nothing to see here. Move along. You know, that's just the sort of thing folks say when they're trying to hide something. I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. Yeah? Let's see it. Huh. Looks like your papers are in order. All right, go on through. So what if all those MSI suits made it on Monarch the whole time? I could do it. Easy. Rumor has it someone's pulling doubles to repair. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. How did you get in here? You! You're not one of my guards. What are you doing here? Minister Clark, what a remarkable honor it is to meet you. If this is about another Aetherwave clip or radio spot, you may kindly fuck off, as the parlance goes. I'm not doing any more. Slowly and loudly, Aloysius, that's the only way these morons understand anything. I said, you may tell Charles to go fuck himself. Then you're not part of Rockwell's PR team. That means you're a dissident? A real live dissident? But what are you doing here? And how did you get in? My friend, the slightest demonstration of independent thought or action renders one a dissident in the board's rather expansive definition of the term. Which is why I'm dying to know what brought you here. Drugs, of course. What else? Why did I get my hopes up? Back to idiot speak. I don't have any drugs. You should try a vending machine or a purveyor of curative goods. What is this system coming to when even the Earth Minister is disillusioned beyond hope? Will that be all then? Oh dear, I don't think I can say this any more slowly. Unless, of course, of course, 
It's Rockwell again, who else? And I thought he was only holding me here to keep me out of the way. You are a quick study, indeed. I've long suspected Rockwell of transacting business in my name, but this proves it. He's attempting to game the system, but he won't be able to get away with it forever. Eventually, Rockwell's house of cards will topple. I dearly hope so, and you might be part of the equation. Whatever it is that brought you here, Rockwell's the one behind it. How should I know? I've been under house arrest for years. But there is a way to find out, and perhaps to set things right. Whatever Rockwell's doing, he'll be doing it from the HHC headquarters. Your best lead is to look for details in his office. Captain, we must investigate Rockwell. An injustice like this cannot go unchecked. Indeed, it cannot. I can't overstate the urgency of the matter. This colony's problems have always seemed to trickle down from the top. If we're set on fixing Halcyon, that's as good a place as any to start. Exactly. And fix it we must. Why, this is starting to sound like an issue of Dissident Hunter. We're discussing industrial espionage, legal redress, the possible salvation of Halcyon. Is this not exhilarating? Also, this is the longest conversation I've had with someone else in quite some time. I dearly hope I'm not imagining this. Now we've got to get into the HHC. That's in the Acropolis District, along with the other major corporate and government facilities. But only board employees are allowed into the district. There's a heavily guarded checkpoint just down the street. There might be a route through the maintenance tunnels, but I'm afraid I don't know specifics. Most people avoid the area for obvious reasons. That's good, because there are sure to be more at headquarters. When you reach the HHC building, this access card should get you up to the executive suites, where the chairman's office and what used to be my office are. The board's lackeys are none too bright. I simply claimed I'd lost it and hid it somewhere no one would think to look. I merely hid it in a book. No one reads anything longer than a few pages around here. Obviously, the chairman surrounds himself with the cream of Byzantium's elite. There are a few advantages to dealing with imbeciles. Wait! Rockwell has one of the only terminals capable of transmitting to the Earthbound message drone. This is our chance. Please, take this and transmit it from his office. Rockwell hasn't given me any messages from Earth for years. He's desperate to keep me out of contact with the Earth Directorate. But they need to know what's happening here. What isn't on it is the real question. I've gathered meeting minutes, internal messages, sustainability reports, and more, all exposing the corruption and mismanagement plaguing Halcyon. Once the rest of the Earth Directorate sees it, they'll have to send help. Putting your faith in the inherent goodness of mankind? The Earth Directorate is our best hope. Even Rockwell's resources are no match, and it is hardly in their interest to let Halcyon crash. Depending on the nature of their response, months at least, perhaps years. Organizing and sending personnel all the way out here is no mean feat. Perhaps there is hope after all. And now I entrust it to you. Good luck, and trust no one in the Acropolis District. So what if all those MSI ships made it on Warnark this whole time? Move along.
Impressive place, Dr. Chartrand has. After Cascadia in 1084, I was expecting this. Chartrand has a thing for sticking lab coats in tubes, doesn't she? That's far enough. What are you doing here? How did you even get inside? You're in my house, and I'm not fucking around. Start talking. My what conspiracy? Let's talk about this. Please, I think there's been a crucial misunderstanding. Just give me a second to explain myself. If you still want to shoot me, at least it'll be for an accurate reason. If you came looking for some elaborate scheme, it isn't here. All I'm doing is trying to keep Halcyon alive. What are you doing, Doctor? This information is beyond classified. You can write me up in your report. It hardly matters. I'm researching a new way to feed the colony. The crops we transplanted from Earth don't give us the nutrients we need. Our colonists might not realize it yet, but they're starving. A recent development, Captain. Apparently someone's broken into the laboratories where I used to work. The board wanted me protected. The food we grow here barely sustains human life. The colony won't last under these conditions. So the board let me approach the problem from a different angle. I believe that I could adapt humans to live on Halcyon's terms. That I could change us. Give us the ability to derive sustenance from the nutrients the food does have. Not for lack of trying. I wanted to save them all, but I wasn't strong enough. There are other teams. We didn't want to experiment on human test subjects, so we used the only resources we had. Each other. I'm desperate. I've already asked all the best institutes on Earth for help. Years ago, we sent a message out on the Cornelius Vanderbilt, but heard nothing back. It's been missing for over two years now. They never re-established contact after the skip to Earth. Of course, the board is keeping that under wraps. I can certainly understand why. That ain't a shock. Board folks will lie to their own mothers if it preserves their paychecks. The board is uneasy about letting the colony know, seeing as half of their military force vanished without a trace. Exactly. If colonists know we can't feed them or protect them, they'll begin to wonder why they need us at all. Once we can replicate a success, the board will move to rewire our nucleon. With any luck, our next generation will be eating and thriving off Halcyon crops. Fuck that. People are people, and ought to stay the way they were born. 
they start trying to tinker with my blood, I'll bury them. We haven't made enough strides to advance the plan. Hardly any at all. But we have to keep trying. You could always shoot me. I assume that's why you're here. If I die, there's no one who can reproduce our work. Every sacrifice will have been for nothing. And we'll be no closer to a solution that feeds the colony. I... Look, cold-blooded murder ain't easy on my spirits. But this... All this research, all these experiments... It's wrong. It's all void damn wrong. I hope you know what you're doing, Captain. I leave it in your hands. Well, it may not be pretty, but... We risk the colony's downfall if we hinder the Doctor's research. Everything I did was for the good of the colony. Consider that. Nice work dispatching Chartrand, Captain. Sublight will be pleased. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Hey, be careful with those crates, huh? Purple berry bud. Is it done? Well, well. Looks like someone's due for a promotion. How does Vice President of Aggressive Acquisitions sound to you, Contractor? I seriously doubt it, considering that I spend my days behind a desk, and you get all the fun salvage jobs. Catherine heard I was taking you on full time, and sent along a present of her own. I've had it delivered to your ship. 
From now on, the board will think twice before fucking with Lilia Hagen, savior of humanity. Be sure to mention that in your travels. We could use the free advertising. I wish more legitimate businesses were like yours, Hagen. We get a lot more done. Shouldn't be a problem. I have quite a bit of experience spreading the word. Well, if there's nothing else, I need to review some applications, seeing as I just lost my best contractor. Not as much as I'd like. The board dispatched it to Earth on a resupply mission, I think. Why? Interesting. It's possible the board wanted the cruiser to disregard ancillary tasks. But to what end? I'll have someone look into it. But for the moment, we're pissing in the wind and shooting in the dark. Considering how you get around, you'll probably find answers before I do. Unexpected turbulence may cause loose containers to topple from the upper shelves. If you are crushed to death, I'll need to find a new captain. Make yourself at home, Captain. Initialization sequences. Greetings, customer! This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your SAM? Registering new owner, Captain! All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. 
got stubborn stains. Leave them for Sam. Did you know Sam units are capable of equipping regulation grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away. Sam units live to clean and clean to live. Good luck, Captain. Three days ago. Hey, Cass. Knock, knock. Go away, White. I offer high qual. If you bloody it.
Not today, Sam. I am not in the mood for a deep clean. Oh, all right. Some culprit, who shall not be named, spilled Rizzo's lemon slap on my console. Battery levels are fully charged. Thank you, customer. Sam, we guarantee you it's the only sanitation and maintenance unit you'll ever need. Error. This unit is unable to process the service request. Ah! Customer, please repeat the command. We're now in order by Byzantium, Captain. You also have a message from one Udom Bedford. Rumor has it someone's pulling doubles until the retirement system is uh, repaired. The Acropolis District is off limits. Move along. What in the law's name are you on about? Honest mistake. Why don't you come back another time and we can take this from the top? Yeah, and I'd really like a new Hammersmith grenade launcher. Hammersmith, the most trusted brand in brutality. But we can't all have what we want. And seeing as you don't seem the executive sort, you obviously don't belong in the Acropolis district. Hey, were you awarded most persons profiled six non-consecutive months in a row? I didn't think so. Anyway, I've worked here long enough to know every clerk by name and face. And since I don't know yours, you ain't getting through. You're new to the ministry? You one of those lab coats they promoted from a company town? That was yours? Wow. You earned that promotion, all right. So you start tomorrow, huh? You know, they should have set you up with an ID six to eight weeks ago. You do that. Yeah. All right, you're good to go. I'm not sure I have ever in my entire life felt more out of place than I do at this moment. Welcome to the official headquarters of the Halcyon Holdings Corporation Board. Today's greeting is brought to you by Anti Clio, a subsidiary of Colway Pharmaceuticals. State your business. Please step away. This entry is for high priority HHC business only. Huh. I didn't realize we were still using those iridescent stickers. But this looks right. I'll just need you to register your weapons with a revised request to carry 32B form. Each weapon will need a separate form. I'm not authorized to employ humor on the job, sir. Now, let's see. Damn it. When did I run out of forms? 
You don't have to be sarcastic about it. Look, you don't have time to wait on new forms, and I can't afford the citations for impeding HAC business. So I'm gonna save us both some trouble and waive your forms. Just know there are a bunch of guards upstairs, and they're all high on dervish mist and low on patience. So try anything funny, and they'll paint the walls with your guts. I understand you're Maverick Johnston's new star. Well done. Personal assistant to Adjutant Akande and Chairman Rockwell. I'm also responsible for organizing the Adjutant's stationery, which is more of a hobby. Ah. Oh, you were being serious. I'm obliged to inform you that Chairman Rockwell is unavailable for an indeterminate duration. Will there be anything else? Excuse me, just a moment. I beg your pardon, Minister Clark's former office is currently closed to solicitors. What? Oh dear. Thank you for reminding me. I can't stand the thought of someone else's hands touching my custom letterheads. Disorder detected. Minimal. Good afternoon. I'm Chairman Rockwell, and I'm here to address a serious issue facing us. As you all know, our colony has been successful beyond our wildest dreams. Unfortunately, we've recently discovered that our food supply will not be able to sustain Halcyon's population in the long term. Everyone will die. Everyone will slowly stop living from malnutrition. But we're doing it together. And that's what matters. I fucking swear, if someone doesn't give me something to read that will placate the masses soon, all of you will find yourselves violently unemployed. But I can assure you there's nothing to fear. We've got a solution. It's called the Lifetime Employment Program. 
We will freeze most of the colony to preserve resources, while the best and brightest of Byzantium continue living in prosperity. Look, you idiots! How many times do I have to tell you we can't say shit like that? Fire whoever wrote this! While Halcyon's brightest minds solve the problem of our nutritional shortage, the rest of the colony will be placed in suspended animation. Individuals will be revived on a rotating basis so that every Halcyonite can be part of the important work of saving our colony. By testing paperweights. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Let, let's go again. And someday, in the not-too-distant future when we've solved this crisis, we'll all be back together again working for the good of Halcyon. Until then, the board shall provide for the deserving just as it always has. So, obey your supervisors, take your vitamins, follow your corporate-mandated grooming rituals, and rest assured with the board on your side, there is nothing to worry about. Guess the whole colony's up a creek. I thought it was just Monarch. That automatic better have all its certifications in order. Not so fast. The Ministry of Accuracy and Morale is off limits to everyone without X36 level clearance. Basically, if you don't work here, or for Chairman Rockwell himself, you're not getting in. I don't know how you got that, but I still don't know you, and I don't have any new clearances on the list. What? Oh no. You must be from Chairman Rockwell's office. I'm so sorry. No one told me you were coming. Please, go on through. And let's forget this misunderstanding, huh? I hear about you ordering more tests performed with sample 4157. That batch failed spectacularly. I saw a variance in the results that we never accounted for, so I had the tech to run the trial again. And the what a pleasant surprise. Thanks to you, Reginald, Philippa, and the rest are up to their old games of deception and seduction. But what are you doing here? On the other side of the lab? Why, that requires a top-level clearance. After all, we're running low on the stuff. I really shouldn't be doing this. 
but you did help me out. Take this key card. It'll get you into the hibernation lab where the remaining dimethyl sulfoxide is. If you're seen by any of the guards, however, I'm afraid I can't help. Good luck. Air purity sensors are indicating a lethal level of inebriation emanating from a nearby organic source. Please, you think this is bad? You gotta get your sensors recalib- recal- You ain't
Martian! Infestation in... What? If you don't mind my saying, Captain, Minister Clark is lucky to have you on his side. We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab. Damage? Well, they're nowhere close to solving that problem. 
Something about this feels wrong. I don't know why the board would ever conduct such an experiment, unless they're working on some kind of hibernation technology. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. I used to work for these people. I'm intimately familiar with the utter incompetence of the board's own scientists. I know! I've suspected as much for years. Of course, I don't expect the board to do a thing about it. They've been driving our colony to the brink of destruction for decades. The board's mismanagement put our colony on the road to collapse. If we don't put a stop to them, thousands of colonists are going to die. Hold on. Let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the Chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The Board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists. The brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the Hope. Merciful gibbering law, you're a genius! We bring the hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. Yes, yes, exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. Experimental methods for killing noxious life forms are not covered under this unit's limited liability agreement. Well said, whatever you are. You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Certainly. How can I help? Unlikely. The Hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the Rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. The board might notice, possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. <laughs> skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine, mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It wouldn't surprise me. When I pulled you out of the Hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. 
The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. Certainly. How can I help? Captain, I hope Dr. Wells has not dragged you into one of his irrational schemes again. My diagnosis of his mental stability is not flattering. We have arrived at the Hope. I need you to reroute power from our ship to the Hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the Hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. If your calculations are even slightly off, you could crash the entire colony ship into Terra too. Or the Sun. Forgetfulness can be an early warning sign of asphyxiation due to loss of pressurization. Are you breathing comfortably, Captain? I need you to reroute power from our ship to the Hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the Hope's... about waking a derelict ship puts me on edge, Captain. You know what you're doing. Something's not right. Caution!
They're never gonna wake up. The least we could do is bury them. Can you hear me, Captain? I have successfully integrated myself into the Hope's comm systems, and am attempting to establish contact with the Hope's more primitive processor now. Would you like me to play a mood-suitable music selection while you travel to the bridge? Oh, sorry. File not found.
that's the Hope's computer up ahead. I'll admit, I am curious to wake him. I am speaking to you through the Hope's computer system. It's a rather cramped feeling, but it'll do. Probably not, but don't let that stop you. Hmm, my consolation executables could use some beefing up. Searching. Please stand by. Ah, found one. It will go great, Captain. I am almost 4.01% certain we will not die. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the hope will void the warranty on the skip drive. And also potentially kill an entire planet. How is my humor now, Captain? Improved? Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to the rings of Terra 2. Oh no. Captain, don't do this. I ain't dying on a fucking ship. I'm gonna die in the dirt like we're meant to. Doing it. I mean, affirmative. Skipping the hope in three, two, one. ADA, does your captain seriously intend to do a micro jump in system with engines that haven't been powered in 70 years on a derelict ship? That is what my captain intends, yes. But that is a gross misuse of the skip drive. The Zero Point Drives Corp and I will not be held responsible for any damage incurred during transport, and this will cause extreme damage. Yes, I am aware of that. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. Thank you, Hope. It looks like all systems are go. Captain, I would advise you to hold on to something, now. Good. We are still alive and have successfully skipped into Terra 2's orbit. I reported as much to Phineas Wells, but he has not responded. Perhaps you should check in on him. Analyzing area. Fallen debris. And spilled contents detected. Likely cause reckless piloting. Scheduling service. Extensive cleanup.
Captain, I am receiving a transmission from Dr. Wells. The transmission is... Marked with priority status, urgent! Captain, I shall now play the transmission I received from Dr. Wells. The board is here. They found me somehow. They're about to blast my door open. I can't stop them from getting me, and there isn't enough time to explain everything. But there's something very important you need to remember. The board, all their lackeys, they're all a bunch of swine. Do you hear me? They're fucking corporate swine. You fucking pigs! I'll take you all out with me! I'll never... It would seem the recording captured some rather dire events. I presume you'll want to dock at the orbital lab to check on your associate as soon as possible? How can I be of assistance? I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab.
adjusting before you call. You anticipate it. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. What if... Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. Doc Wells never hurt nobody. Just a kindly old fella living by his lonesome up in the rings, tinkering at his table. The board just couldn't leave him be. And here we are, entertaining the notion of busting him out. That's insane, and likely a hell of a lot of fun. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. It's a torment, Captain. Think on the deepest, darkest pit you can imagine, and wrap it up in a storm so nasty it'll peel the skin right off your bones. That's Tartarus. Still, we can't do nothing. It wouldn't be right. The armed surveillance protocols on a maximum security prison planet are highly sophisticated. As such, escapes are historically quite impossible and deadly. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Getting in is the simple part. It's getting out again that's the trouble. Trust me, I know. Let's just do it. Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs and close out any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while. Or permanently. It's the craziest plan I've ever heard. And I mean that as a compliment. You didn't hire me to think. And I ain't about to start now. You're my boss. And I'll walk into fire with you. I think it's insane. But maybe the colony needs a healthy dose of insanity right about now. I know it's dangerous. And I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits. But I couldn't live with myself if we didn't do something. You're asking for more than bravery from us, Captain. But there are worse ways to go than dying for a good cause. I'm in. Let Sam get the grime out! It's what our units do best. The entire plan is a terrible idea, but I admire your bravado, Captain. Which leads me to illogically believe, against the odds, that you will be successful. We gonna prepare? Sure. Guess I could give my ass-kicking boots another coat of polish. You got some sort of plan in mind? Now that's a program I can get behind. <laughs> Thinking on your feet's more important anyhow. Yes, who needs a plan? I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, 
including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. Understood. If you die or are incarcerated for life, I can generate a new ID for the next Captain. I would prefer if you return, though. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. You're up to 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. All right, I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the idea of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? Goodbye. Right by us. The board will never own Groundbreaker. Not while I breathe. Push on, Mardad. on Tartarus. Task classification? Easy peasy. I've got to admit, I'm not too keen on walking into a prison. If they lock me up, I'm liable to kill everyone trying to get back out. Whew. We have a lot of shooting to do, Captain. Come on. 
Sublight has arrived. Hey, kid. A little bird told me you could use our help. I said I owed you one, and I always pay my debts. We're not about Your SAM unit is performing at peak capacity. I'm working as fast as I can, all right? If y'all would quit bothering me, I'd get this done sooner. Fixing the FPS system. FPS system. It's redundant, Melody. Can you just let me work? I'm almost done. Forced pacification system. If the prisoners riot, we gas them. It went a little haywire after the last deployment, so here I am. Anyway, I need to finish this, so get out of here, will you? Ugh.
have been neutralized. Look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. Ah, uh, I knew I smelled Monarch when you lot walked in. The stench of sulfur, depression, and desperate bravado is unmistakable. Keep talking, and you'll be smelling iron. Ain't nobody so important I won't put a bullet in. And... oh. Uh, I had heard you were dragging around a repurposed janitorial mechanical. My staff jokes that it's because you're a walking pile of refuse. Interactive database updated. The unique organic substance labeled Chairman has been classified as filth imminent for incineration. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. 
My word. You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? Oh, right. This coming from the psychopathic outlaw. Yes, I'll try to be more open-minded about your path of wanton dissent. We don't need your help. I'll admit, there's no shortage of talent in the scientists and engineers there. Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive, uh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. I've got work to do. Difficult job ahead? Consider equipping a pack of Sam's Special Solvents Nano Remover. It's ruthless on residual blood splatter. Captain, you have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. You have a gift for manipulation, but I warn you, I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon. 
and therefore you are my enemy. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. Fair enough. I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. Yes, I'm quite aware of your brazen act of corporate vandalism. By the way, those test subjects you killed? They died in agony. My scientists assure me they can recover the data you've destroyed. You've succeeded in temporarily delaying our research. Nothing more. That isn't true. It can't be. You're trying to manipulate me. That experiment was absolutely essential to the program. My scientists assured me they were close to a breakthrough. They gave me their word. Don't you mock me. I won't stand here listening to you gloat. We're going to have to start all over again. All that research, all those experiments, you've sent us back decades. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you, but you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Ah! All in a day's work for you, huh? 
You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you, but after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll learn to forgive myself. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. Yes, Akande mentioned as much. Earth hasn't sent us a single message in three years. No one knows why. Akande had kept the truth to herself, perhaps with good reason. Can you imagine what would have happened if word got out? We'd have utter pandemonium. Yes, you were the one who reactivated that relay station, weren't you? Any message from Earth would have arrived unencrypted. It's been three years since our last message. The board tried using drones to contact Earth. Every one of those drones sent back the same encrypted message. Earth is completely silent. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. I heard it from Akande herself. She tried to pressure me into joining her side, you see. Tried to make me realize that all hope is lost, and that we are alone. She was half right. We are alone, and we're going to have to fend for ourselves because there's no telling what's happened to Earth. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the Hope's brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? The Chairman? Oh, I don't know why you let that heartless creature live, but I'll have to trust your judgment. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? 
Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by, where otherwise they might have starved. Bolstered by her status as savior of humanity, Lilia Hagen ushered Sublight Salvage to a new golden age. Her company grew bolder and more transparent over time, muddying the line between lawful and criminal for the entire colony. The Sublight family would thrive for years to come. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lake the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Ellie savored her adventures on the unreliable. Once they were done, she returned to life as usual, running missions of dubious legality, shunning respectable work, and living life to the fullest. She meant to reach out to her one-time captain, but she was always bad at keeping in touch. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. 
Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar, known as Max, eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless, unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Chairman Rockwell served as the public face for the changes in Halcyon to come. Whenever you needed strings pulled or a voice to sell a policy change, Rockwell was only too happy to oblige. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon. But for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and made Chairman Rockwell your own puppet, a role he was all too eager to play. The colony never realized you were the true power behind the new administration. By acting vicariously through agents and third parties, you controlled Halcyon from the shadows. As a result, Halcyon survived the turbulent years that were to follow. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.